I don't, I don't have my. I'll bring it over if I need to. We'll let everybody, everybody get, get in. in. We'll get, get started. started. Should, Should be live. live. Do a quick, quick sound check, check with folks. folks. Give, Give us a thumbs, thumbs up. We're good. good. We're gonna We're take, take you guys, guys through a uh, live build, build tonight. tonight. Make sure, Make sure we get, we get some, some folks in here. We'll go through, through some stuff. We'll give it a few minutes. minutes. There's several people sending us messages, messages today saying they wanted to be part of this. Uh, so, uh, so don't, don't jump, jump right, right into it. Uh, uh, so I'm going to give it a couple minutes. Because we have two of them over there. If they're getting these back there, it means they're doing good. It's... All right, guys, I think we fixed it. We moved the PC that we were doing this streaming on. It was over here, and I got uh, several of the folks over tonight helping with this build. Um, it should be fine now. Let me know if the audio is okay. See if we get a good thumbs up that the echo is gone. All good. Excellent. Yeah, sorry about that. We moved that, that streaming PC over. Once we replugged it, it jogged the... Uh, the feed, you know, I have both mics turned on, the default mic from the uh, the secondary camera that we got over there and then uh, the other one. So, um, what's our stream of two right now? About 60, something like that, 70? 71. 71, okay. So we'll go ahead and get started, guys. So tonight, what we're gonna be going through, um, I think it'll be good for a lot of the new folks that are coming to the channel. If you have not built a rig, um, and you've been thinking about it and you've been checking our videos You've been checking a lot of other people's videos and you wanted to look for you know A lot of the videos the way the episodes were set up were set up in such a way to like we'll do one episode to build a rig You know just build the frame and then another one might be a motherboard and then another one might be you know going through different card Configurations so tonight and then this particular episode our live stream is I've had a few uh, acquaintances and friends that have been getting into the, uh, you know, just building their own rigs. And I have um, Mike, which will be in the screen here in a second. Um, we're gonna build his rig tonight. Um, and normally I would do an episode and then just play, let that play. And then we would do this kind of offline, you know, as I would help them work through some of the stuff. So Mike's gracious enough to bring his stuff over. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build his rig in front of you guys. And it's gonna be kind of just very fluid. Um, I'm going to answer some of the questions as we're starting to do it. We're actually going to put everything together from scratch. The only thing we did ahead of time is we pre-cut stuff. And I'm going to show you guys kind of uh, the, the numbers, of, like the sizes. We got the tape measure here. So this should be a cradle to grave full mining rig build tonight. We're going to be using six of the, he picked up, was able to pick up six of the 1060 GTX. These are the six gig cards. Um, they're from EVGA, the AC uh, X 2.0. So we're gonna be putting this in, and he actually picked up another, mo a different motherboard than I have. I we have not reviewed. So if any of you guys have had this, we're gonna work to get this to work tonight. Um, so this is the Z270 SLI Plus MSI motherboard. It's got six slots on it, and I, that was essentially the 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 piece that got him to get this. But what I'm gonna do is. We're gonna work through the BIOS on this too, so we're gonna kind of do a live thing. This thing is cradle to grave tonight. It might run a little long. I'm sorry for that, but this is gonna be vital for folks that are getting into this because they can see on how to create a rig from a frame to installing the motherboard to configuring it to cradle to grave, the whole thing tonight. So, and this might be a little long for some people, but we got, I think we got all the parts as we go through it. We'll, we'll take everybody through it. Um, the mining rig itself is going to be an open airframe that's using essentially three different cuts there for the metal and I'm going to explain what that is and then um, some of the wood pieces and we're missing one other wood piece that we'll bring over which is the uh, 
the part that holds the graphics cards, but we're using 1 16th by 1 inch angled aluminum. And we'll get that all, all, don't worry, all the details and stats will be down at the bottom of this video. We'll make sure that it's in there for you guys on this one especially. Um, but this is the angled aluminum you can get from like uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, if you're in the States and the other hardware stores. Uh, 1 16th by 1 inch angled aluminum cut in 26, I think this is 26 and a half. This is going to be the length of the, the, uh, the actual, just the, how big the, the case will be. 26 and a half on this one. This one run, will run this way on the case, which is the depth of the case, which is 16 and a half inches. And then this will be the height of the case, which this is right at, I believe at 11 inches. I don't know if this is actually the real length of 11 inches, boys. So yeah, that looks like 11 inches. So it will go something like this. We'll get into this in here in a, a second. I'm going to actually let Mike start to put this together. Part of this also is just letting him kind of go through and build it and me kind of acting as a guide with it. But we'll be doing something like this nature where we're going to put them together kind of like that. And then we'll have this wood, which is 16 and a half. This is 16 and a half. This runs the length of the case lined up just right there and it's going to be going in like that. That's the way this case is going to start and we're going to start to put it together. But um, I wanted to kind of go through at least the measurements. We'll get those up on the... Uh, is that three quarter inch thick wood? This is... Here, let's see if we can get it close. Uh, if you give me the, the other camera, I'll show exactly which kind of what this is. When he, when he when Mike came over here with this and we went to cut this, uh, I was like, man, you got some really nice wood, bro. And then I sat there and thought about that for a second when I just said, but this is some pretty nice wood. Um, pretty long wood too. No, that we're, I'll digress. Uh, so we got, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. This is a family show. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to put this together. Uh, and again, we're gonna take, to get these cut, you guys can use normal saws. Um, we use a table saw, and I think a few videos we had back, I kind of showed just a brief uh, cut of that, of how, how to, you know, I mean, you can use a hand saw on this. I mean, it's, just, it's a matter of getting your cuts right and getting them even and making sure that they're as close as straight as possible, um, you know, uh, even across the ends, because otherwise when you're putting it together, it kind of starts to take a, take a shape you don't want. So I'm gonna let Mike kind of start this over here. Um, you want to sit here? I'll, I'll, I'll swap you seats um, and then we'll start to kind of get it together. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is kind of walk him through this as we're starting to do it and putting the case together. Okay. Hopefully not taking out the rest of the stuff. This the camera. So we're going to be taking the, the 26 and a half and the 16 and a half and I, what I usually do is run run you can do it either way you can have one on top of the other I usually go the 26 and a half the long way just to brace the top you know the, the hold this side up because it from the, when you're lifting it you're not putting all the stress of this trying to you know lift it that way so I usually put this one down and then this one on top of it and then I use the corner pieces to kind of to square it up and we'll see if I can get Get that camera and just add it as a small. Turn it up. Yeah, that, that probably doesn't have the range. I need to get an extension for that camera. We'll bring it over when we get close uh, to getting this first one over, and I'll show you guys kind of how that comes together. Again, this is if you guys have built rigs, I'm sorry, uh, this probably won't be the funnest live stream for you, um, but I think this is vital for some of the new folks starting and getting into this space. It also helps us have a pointer and you guys also if you guys have friends getting into the space a pointer uh, to send you know folks on getting that here I'll hold this person it's good to, to kind of bring a friend uh, if you're gonna build a rig make sure they're all squared up we're gonna get that kind of just back it out one time we're back it out a little bit more and then we'll, we'll show you guys this close up here and then go for it yep there it is. So 
essentially what we did here is we made sure we backed it out and backed it forward. That way this is perfectly flush here and this is perfectly flush here. When you first do it, it might kick this board over. Just back it out for a second and go right back in. It'll pull, it'll pull it together and make it nice and tight. So that's just the one screw on that side. And the screws that we're using, we've shown before. Here, we'll make sure that we get light on those. They're the half inch self-tapping screws. That's what penetrates this angled aluminum you just literally just give it a little a little elbow grease and it goes right in and we're going to do the other side over here i'm going to give it a hold and that's just that's going to go through both pieces of that angled aluminum there and now it's going to hold it nice and tight in there so both sides that keeps that kind of taut and now you can see how structured that that angle aluminum is and here we're going to do this side this was on the bottom that's on the corner mm -hmm. we get a super chat oh chris you can you grab a piece of scrap wood from outside just like a little block perfect yeah, ready. A little scrap piece here. We'll need that for the top. I'm going to answer the, uh, he's going to get the other side over here. Screw down. I'm going to look at the super chat. Oh, there you go. Thanks, man. We really appreciate it. You know, we try to get all this stuff out to you guys. You know, without any kind of, you know, paywalls or anything like that. We do it, you know, you Clearly, if you guys give us donations and stuff, we just roll it right back into this channel to make better content for you guys. Yeah, just back it back, back out. It's okay if it gets kind of loose on you. Just back it out and then go forward with it. Can't let your arm. Yeah. You just want to try to squeeze those together. It's really good if you have another person. Like if you're gonna build this and you're like, hey dude, come over and help me out. And if, and if they're asking you what it is, just back it one back out. Just Here, we're gonna back. We're gonna slow this down. Let's go there. Now try that. Okay. Now I'm forward of it. There we go. There we go. We, all I did is I slowed the, dr the drill down. This was set to two and it was going real, real fast. You can go to here, which is more of a kind of a torque mode, and just, just that way it's, you're not jumping it off a track. Um, again, the big the big thing when I try to get these built is just trying to make sure the corners here are all together and nice and tight. It just makes it a more rigid design for you. And just if you have to, just back it back out and go back forward until you get it nice and even and level for you. That. Yeah, you, you can switch it back up. Just if you're backing it out, you can. Right. No, you're good. Yes. Did it back? That's yeah, fine. it's fine. All right. So what we're gonna do? I'm actually gonna move these boxes too, so I can get that other camera on some of this as we're building it. We'll move these graphics cards over here. We'll see if we can get a different angle on this here. You want to put that in as a how much it'll help or not. But at least a lot of you see it when they're drilling. Some more of this. Now as he's starting to do these other sides here, uh, if you guys have questions, you guys can throw them out. They'll relay them to me and I'll see if I can get them answered while we're doing this. I always like the question and the answer part. Why did this holds the mother where the motherboard set? I have seen people do, um, you know, angle aluminum and just countersink some of the like the tower screws for the motherboard. You can do that too. Also, I've always liked the wood. Just that's not a bad. It's not conductive. It, it's not conductive, and on top of it, it just really makes the case a lot more rigid and strong. And so a lot of this stuff, 
you know, if we're moving rigs around a lot, like I move a rigs a lot. I mean, they're back there right now. I'm going to pull those over into a server room. I mean, we move things around a lot and I just not having something that's structured and this solid is just, we, we used to just put a couple pieces of wood and then it would start to flex and stuff. And I just, I like having the more solid wood base. Um, there are different ways. I, I say, you know, look around the cheapest option for you guys. This is like the, should be the cheapest piece of the rig for you. But part of it's like where to put everything at. You don't have to build an open airframe like this. You can get and just get racks or just get anywhere. I mean, we have some that are on racks, right? Because I had some people that wanted to put their cards in racks. I helped them put them in racks. You do not have to put an open airframe. This is really just more for you're going to move it around. Like if you're a kid at college and you're going to put the rig together and you're going to move it from your college to dorm, you're going to take it back to your parents' house. Yeah, I'll help you hold that. And it's okay. This is why we wanted to do this. I want to show you that it's, you know, it's kind of a pain sometimes to put this stuff together. And it really helps if you have two people doing it because one person can kind of hold it in place. Another person can drill. And then make sure that it's good to go. I mean, ask your friends to come over and help. You know, if you're family members are wondering, you know, like what the heck's he doing? You know, you can, you can sit there and show them on how to do it. So, I, you know, part of this is also, I mean, it's kind of therapeutic in a way. All right, so what, what I usually do is... Down. Yep. This is where you want that scrap piece of wood. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to use a scrap piece right now to kind of treat it like this to kind of allow you to square it up. You want something that allows you to square it because this is kind of a pain. But essentially, you're just reflipping it over and doing it upside down. Now there might be other ways and what i want to see is if you guys have a better way to build this frame you know link us to just a quick vine video something that, that you've done you know 10 seconds just say hey man if you're doing it like this do it this other we learn from all you guys too i mean we've done this we built so many of these cases that we just wanted to try to show you guys a live build of one you want to get that yep you want yep i want it like that um grab this on the inside yes yeah, so you want that all you want everything on the inside of the other that was a good point there. You, you guys want to make sure that that both of these point, you know, these connections are in the inside. Let this cut, let the outside bar here cover all the all the connections up. So everything's in the inside. It all comes down to what's in what's on front. What I would do is do, take this one below because this one was above. That way you're consistent with up there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so so good. what we did is we made sure that the long piece, the 26 and a half piece is on on top of the 16 and a half piece and then this 11 inch piece which is the the tower shirt as i'd call it that holds everything up is you know covering up those two that's kind of like when you lift up your the 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 long part of the lift is holding it yep, there you go. and as you guys can see that i don't know if we had the other little ones no we didn't have a little camera okay just using that second piece of wood there. I'm going to leave it in. What's the height? The height of it is 11 inches. The height of the case is 11 inches. We used to do nine and a half and it was just a pain to work on it. When you didn't have enough room to get under there, if you're trying to mess with a riser or anything, I don't want to have to take, the th take everything apart if I'm trying to work on it. So 11 inches allows you to do that. Here, let's make this all the way over. Okay, you're good. This is another reason why it's good to have two people to keep it nice and together. There, it punched through. And then you can use that kind of guide wood and just back it, you know, just kind of pull it back. Here, you just back the screw just a little bit. If you back one side out just a little bit, because the hard part's just getting it penetrated through those, those pieces and you just kind of pull that, that, that guide wood off. You can pull that piece off like that. And then just re-screw that back in. That that pulls it in there. These, these sheet metal screws do some serious work on this this angle of aluminum. Shout out for another Get it done. Thanks, guys. We enjoy we're enjoying doing this for you guys. I think this is going to really help out.
a lot of new people, even if you're a veteran at building mining rigs, this is the kind of video that I think that really helps those folks that are trying to get in and you're just like, oh, I'm trying to explain it to them. They're not getting, you guys can send them over to us. Let them, let them take a watch at this. Say, hey, it's going to be an hour and a half watch, whatever, but it's going to show you all the things. This allows you guys to kind of channel that same uh, information, you know, for, for other folks to be able to see it and see how it's built and, you know, hopefully helps the community out in general. If you're getting into this, this is a real hot topic right now, especially with the crypto pricing. All right, that's fine. Yeah, just leave that in there and then we'll, we'll get the other side. I don't think this camera's hot, right? This other one? Is it on? I didn't even see it. Oh, it is hot. Wow. It, it, it was like hidden. All right. I, I made it a little smaller. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so we're using this, this little piece of wood here just to kind of, on the top part, you use it just to help kind of like do a T-square on the, on the end there so you can actually just keep it together, keep the case together when you're putting it together. At least for the top part. Yep, perfect. We got two more sides on this side and then we'll be putting in the uh, the graphics card piece that'll be four inches down and we'll put the other boards here in the middle. And then the case is essentially put together and then we'll do some drilling, some pre-drilling for the graphics cards. And kind of get those all, uh, the holes pre-drilled for those. Now you don't have to, to screw down the graphics cards, you can. You can um, zip tie them. I've seen people zip tie them once you have like a, a brace for them. I always like screwing them down again because we move these cases around a lot. Um, you got any questions why you did that this year? What we up to? Hey, any of you guys join in from Barnacle's, uh chat this day, today we did some uh, donations over for Barnacles he's a youtuber he's trying to get into some ethereum we're gonna see if we can get him helped out on that and just give him some pointers any of you guys from his channel from this morning welcome What's happening with Vega? That's a great question. I'm, I'm more of asking a question of what's going on with the uh, mining cards. Um, there's some pretty interesting uh, discussions going on with that. They're only going to be for uh, large vendors, such as like Genesis. And I've, I, I've met uh, Mark, Marco Stringe and, uh, at Hashers United a few years ago. And Marco's a good dude. I mean, he runs uh, Genesis Mining. Uh, Burst Corn is interesting. I've done a little bit. I don't have a ton of hard drives uh, laying around for that. I mean, most of the hard drive space, you know, the large hard drives get used up with all the 4K, 4K video that we use for this channel. But, um, you know, I, I like the idea of it. I think it's pretty interesting. Um, I know iMind Blocks is, I think that's his YouTube channel. He's all over that Burst. Back out. Um... I'm real interested in storage coin and side coin. I mean, I, there would be nothing better than to have, you know, an app running on Ethereum with the storage. What's going on with it? Trying to get it out. Here, get it to the end of this this table, and then now we can get better leverage. Um, getting you know your 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 storage, your cloud storage on. Uh, hey, we can just rip this off. Yeah, this thing actually made a really good bond and we were having trouble backing it out. Your thoughts on cooling in the summer months? Thoughts on cooling in the summer months is you're going to sweat a lot unless you get a proper uh, air conditioning unit. Uh, most of the rigs down here right now are shut off and we're letting the air conditioner catch back up to get it cool down here since we're going to be working. But, uh, you know, a normal 2,600 square foot place, 
that's um, pretty open. Like if you have like a garage or warehouse, you're gonna need for the cool at least four or five rigs, at least 14,000 BTU, which is cr absolutely crazy. Um, that's with like seven or eight rigs to keep it nice and cool. Uh, Let's get the 26. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go get the 26. Yeah. Um, we're getting the other, we had another cut that we're going to get here uh, that we got to pull over. Um, I'll come back over here and talk to you for a second while we're getting that. Um, the, uh, a normal like cooler that you get from like uh, in the States, like from Walmart or something like even the high end one, I think does like 4,300, maybe 5,000 uh, equivalent. I think it's BTU. Uh, uh, equivalent of uh actual cooling will not even cool like an 800 square foot room if you had like four rigs in there like it's just it can't keep up so you're in the like the 10 to 14 thousand range which are very expensive you know it's like two or three thousand if you're trying to keep that room or that area with like your five to six rigs um at a reasonable 70 degrees celsius or 70 degrees uh Fahrenheit comfortable temperature bottom line you're probably going to be setting it around 80 in the room um, and that's with the air conditioner blasting at full in the summertime at least in the, the states um, it, it's just cooling cooling I mean it's a lot better than it was with like the 290 X's and you guys that own 290 X's know what I'm talking about those things are like hair dryers like literally turning on a hair dryer and leaving it on um, for each one of them and actually the, that Pro Duo machine that we built a few days ago, um, that thing, even with the water coolers, man, that's just like blowing out hot air on both sides of those coolers. It's pretty hot. Get that piece over here. Yeah, oh. pencil over there. Uh, yeah, we got it. Okay. You, you got the pencil over there. So this piece here, Mike's gonna be doing, we're gonna put on one of the sides, we're gonna come four inches down from the top we'll measure that and show you guys um, and that's to brace the graphics cards so like one of these dudes here that is for this so whenever we're putting the graphics card in here we want just the bottom part of the card not to interfere with the inter, you know uh, interfere with the, any of the the IO ports on the back just just enough to where you could set that card in it as long as you have a screw there it's holding it it's suspending it there the only ones you really want the kind of back support on is if you got like a like an old Devil 13 like dual card heavy. Um, I'd get in there, do that part. I'll help pull and we can measure. Why are you making a six part rig, not an eight or a nine? Uh, this was Mike's. Too poor. <laughs> this was Mike. <laughs> this was Mike's. Uh, Mike's rig here. Uh, he's starting with. Uh, Starting with one of these first, you know, start and you know, all of us had are having problems getting cards now. I mean, it's I think it's everybody. So we're drying the uh, 1060s, the 1060s out. That's what's going to go in that. What else we got? The MSI Z270 SLI Plus, Supernova. Oh yeah, did you get all the? Oh yeah, we got all the info in the upper right. If it's uh, blurry, let us know. We can expand that. All the details of the build are in the upper right-hand corner. We'll make sure that it's part of our, our description. I think it is. And the links to those uh, items out there should be out there too um, for this particular build. I would say if you're, if you're going to go out and pull the trigger right now, wait until we get to here in a little bit to make sure this is going to work. I think it will. I think I can get it to work. But I want to go through the motherboard settings with you guys on the screen as we configure this. So this is going to be a new one for us, which is good because it's more new content and hopefully answer some questions if people have the Z270 from MSI, at least the SLI Plus board. Um, so right now he's just measuring to make sure that where we're going to put that is lined up with enough room. And I always kind of do the old card test once he kind of gets one of those uh, screwed down. Zoom out. Oh, you're going to have to back up here. Was, yeah, we don't we don't need the SD card in there. I actually have an episode here. Let me do this. I 
know about that. We'll get a little close up there for a second. It's just where we're going to be in there. You can see that kind of go through there. Now, if you're going to put longer screws in there, you're going to want to pre-drill those holes. So if you, I learned this the hard way the other day, um, again, and I've learned it a few times, but I, it's like I forget about it. And then I remember when I split a board in half, if you are open, or if you are drilling straight into a board with anything bigger than that half inch screw, you're going to want to pre-drill it because pretty much when you're drilling through that, all those particles got to go somewhere and all it's going to do is expand and it's going to snap the board. So you want to make sure that you've pre you've pre drilled those if you're going a little bigger than that. The the half inch isn't too bad. Um, we'll get this zoomed out. A little bit here. Any other questions, Jason? Why he's making sure we're we're perfectly lined here? It's from the top. I'm gonna hold. Kind of leaving him up to this. Uh, somebody wants to know if we can put a link to the diagram. Of the uh, uh, link to the what? A link to the diagram. Of the uh, yeah, so I, we absolutely can. Uh, so I, I've drew, we've drew, uh, I think we drew this out in a cut. I think we actually have a CAD one somewhere. I'm going to, I had a, a guy that actually built the same exact rig off of one of our YouTube things and actually sent me the CAD drawing if you guys would like it in vector format. But um, we do have this, I think, drawn up a couple different ways, but we can't get it with the right specs and size. If we want to, let's you make sure we document that. that way. Somebody asked, uh, why Core i3 Ryzen 7 or Ryzen R7 1700 can give you 20 percent of RX 580s BTC hash power? Um, we haven't tested. I mean, I have three or four Ryzen chips. Um, I haven't done a lot of CPU mining with them. We're, we go with the i3 because that's about the only thing we can find around here right now. Um, usually, we go with Celeron processors because we do nothing besides just need a, a host processor. For the mining, uh, for the mining rig, usually you don't need anything pretty heavy duty in processing. If you are going to use the Ryzen for CPU, um, you can do that for CPU mining. But I have done a test with an i7, uh, a couple different i7s, uh, 4790K. We've done. I uh, actually did it with a 6950. Overclocked, not overclocked, same cards, no difference in mining at all. Zero, like none. It's all, it's all predicated on the graphics card. So, um, if you are doing it with mining with the CPU, big difference because then that's the CPU. So, I was freakishly close to the camera. Sorry, guys, if I was freaking you guys out. So right now we're just lining up the boards. Um, Really, this, there's no science to this. Eyeballed. These are eyeballed. <laughs> there's no science to this part. I mean, what you can do. I mean, I mean, I, we did the math in our heads really quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're, we're, we're doing the math really quickly. Here, before you drill it, I'm going to show them real quick. Just like the thing that you really got to consider is that the way a motherboard is with you, you have your with your screw holes on this side and kind of centered and then this. So what you want to do is make sure that you've at least made coverage on all of them. You could pretty much put these boards about anywhere and you're going to probably hit, be able to hit you know this board anywhere where you put the board is very predicated to what you feel like doing i mean you just got to be sure that you have enough room for your power supply yeah thanks for zooming out i'm, I'm sitting here showing stuff and uh we're not considering the camera um so you know it's just really to make sure that the boards are under to where you can get you know your spacer screwed into um and that you have enough room for your power supply you know it's so a power supply be over here the board's actually going to be over here we always have the board angled right underneath the cards and it's usually on this side this is kind of just habit for us is to kind of line it up like that and then have the power supply probably over here is where we're going to end up with that if you have two two power supplies on a two power supply build it's fine you can have them kind of like kind of set up like that but um you just the board spacing really just matters to where um 
where the motherboard's gonna be at. The other part that you have to consider too is to make sure that you have, if you go with thinner boards than this, um, you want to make sure that you've at least brought your power supply over and that, that you're not hanging on, like it's, it, it's, it's under it. Because I've done a few before where I've kind of like this and then the power supply comes here and you're like, oh damn, I'm not all the way over. So you may have them kind of off centered a little bit just because, but that's okay. It's really, this is more function than form. Um, you want to make sure that it's, it's doing what it needs to for the motherboard, for where the power supply is at. Um, again, it doesn't have to be square on that part. Um, are lined up appropriately. You get that a little bit. Nice. Uh, three gig cards for Ethereum at a minimum set. Looking at the DAG, looks like November through January. It just really depends on the DAG growth. Um, but remember, especially on the NVIDIA side, NVIDIA mines Zcash very well. Zcash does not have that same uh, memory map uh, the way the dagger file works. Um, so you're not going to run into that memory issue with uh, Zcash, Monero, Sciacoin, Decred. I mean, you got a lot of other uses of those three gig cards. The same way the, a lot of the two gig card people are still rocking away. I mean, those 570 Ti's that I have over there are still going for some uh, some folks that have 570 Ti's with two gig cards. So, you know, just because the two gigs stopped working, people just repurposed them. So, um, if you can get good deals right now on the three gig card, you're going to be able to hedge on them with uh, with Ethereum for a while, but you'll be able to move to another crypto with them. Like the shirt. Ah, I'm representing both tonight. I mean, it's a little bit of SpaceX, a little bit of NASA. Love the folks in that uh, in that industry. They're really the ones taking us to that next level. I want to be filming mining rigs from Mars one day, guys. I mean, this is let's do this. Think of the cooling. Oh, we'll put that one back over there, yeah. So we'll get a close-up of this rig once we're done here, just to kind of give you guys the, the more full look and design of it. I really do like this wood. You like that? I like that. Like I like that, that wood. <laughs> <laughs> you got good wood. <laughs> That's so sick. Uh, you do too. No, it's all right. You got great wood. I got great wood. Thanks. No, I, it just looks a lot more polished. I mean, so this is like finished wood. Usually I get like the really cheap one by three pine uh, wood, which is a little, actually just a little bit taller. This is the 0.75, so it kind of hangs just a little above this one inch piece. But uh, I mean, you could get any, it, it, really anything that fills this. Uh, what I would say is some people have asked, what about just getting like a, just a flat board like this and having a flat, I, having the slats like this do matter. So, I mean, I, I, I've had one where I've went just, where I'd got a piece of MDF and figured why not make it really solid um, and did the whole thing like that. That machine was significantly hotter. It just, there was no airflow coming up underneath it. Um, on some of the rigs, once we kind of get them set in play, yeah, it's fun doing that stuff over the, in the back. Um, you could put little bumpers and stuff underneath these to kind of get them up off the ground, especially if you have the power supply pointed downward. Uh, and it allow it to breathe. So let's get a, a, here, let me see this. You guys can kind of see that kind of design and that kind of look. You know, another thing too, um, we're not gonna do it for this one, but what I'll do is I'll usually get like a sandbar, like a little, a, it looks like a little bar and it's actually like sandpaper and you could sit there and just grind these ends off you know, just give it one little pass on there, especially if you're going to paint it. If you're going to paint this, maybe we'll do one sometime of painting. But if you if you scrub this down, you can give it a good, you know, a spray paint job. And you're, you're going to want to do that because you don't want to paint it and then cut yourself. Um, all right, I think we're good. All right. Let's get straight so, to the motherboard. Let's put the board together, throw it back in the back, put the cards on. Mike's like, let's do this, man. Talking. All right, so we're gonna we'll get into the ground or the uh, spacers over there. So I think we only had four. We literally ran out. I ordered some more, but I think we have just enough four. Usually I put six of these on here. These are little plastic spacers. We'll show you guys a bag of them. Hey Mike, what screws are you using? Uh, for these ones, we're gonna be using. 
One and a quarter. Yeah, one and a quarter. Now these are going to go a little further. These are actually a little longer than what I really want on the on this board. This is why usually I get the little thicker uh, wood. These actually will go through. What about the bolts for the, uh, the uh, metal, the sheet metal. Screws. Oh, the sheet metal screws. It's uh, here. You want to yeah. do this with this camera? Put it on that camera. So right now we're just kind of lining up the uh, spacers and then we're going to just zip these right down. Show you kind of. Let's skip, the, skip the middle. I don't care about the middle. Yeah, we're going to skip the middle right now. Normally we put one in the middle uh, just because when you're pressing down on the uh, the power supply, these kind of just go right down. So we did, there's a spacer there and you just kind of come straight down into the spacer. This holds it just over the wood. We just kind of line this up with the motherboard. Try not to do it at an angle if you can. All right, hold up, hold up. Go a little crooked. Yeah, a little bit that way. There, good. And you can push that spacer a little further if it's not good. Now this is not a race. Do not do this fast. Let me repeat, do not hammer down on your thing. You will split your board. So you want to do this slowly? <laughs> you do not want to. I was just doing that. Yeah. An hour before. Yeah. <laughs> you want to do this nice and slow. Line it up. Now, there's different ways to do this. You guys can look out there of mounting these. This has always worked for me very well. It's nice and secure. You can see it right there. Just hold the board down nice and tight. It ain't going anywhere. Where's that extension at? There's a, there should be a long extension for this on behind there. You need that, I can get it. Does the motherboard matter when mining? Yes. <laughs> yes, only because you got to make sure. Hold on. Just letting that spin. Um, the motherboard matters for not the reasons that you think. The motherboard matters because you got to make sure that it's one that all the slots are going to work and not give you a whole bunch of hell and trouble um that they're going to be consistent and that that it's beefy enough that you're not just not going to pop the cap there i tried like an old like cheap i don't even call it, i think it was like trend data it was like some kind of old motherboard and i tried to like put like three cards on it and it actually burned up the caps right away and it just couldn't handle the power that was going through these things so name brand motherboards msi biostar um, Asus boards, but you know the ones that we link. The reason why we link them is because we know that they, they work and that we have rigs working with them. Um, we're putting the memory here. Let me show. Eight gig goes in the first slot. Ballistics memory. Yeah, we just went with eight gig with this one. Um, single sticks. You can go four gig. Um, eight gig is fine. Usually, I, I, I usually try to put at least 8 gig on them just because at some point if, if we end up doing some kind of mining that's going to require local memory then I'm not have to go buy more memory. Yeah, just don't hit the... Here. Make sure we don't hit... You don't want to hit any of those pins down there either. You will... You bend those pins, it's game over for the board. You the processor. We're going to show them the processor. Again, these all these hardware is linked at the top. We got a question? Getting that out. Here, just give this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, so that comes straight out. Oh, yeah, this is my stuff. He wants, he wants to try, he wants to do it. I told, he told you, like, I want to do it myself. <laughs> So I'm, I'm letting him do it. It's so it's so natural for me to just do it. Just want to make sure that you line those up right. It's kind of like a puzzle piece. Go slow if you've never done it before. Just go slow. Make sure that you're lining it up. There is an arrow, and there's two little. Uh, here, I don't know if we can. Oh, this probably won't make it. Turn off because it's. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yep, that's right. And then we're, we're going to flip that down. And you're gonna get that up underneath. Mm, right. 
Yep. Get that. Uh, no, 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 no. You gotta get down. You gotta make sure that's under yeah, that yeah. screw, and then it's gotta go down that way. There we go. I would have got that. But. You would have got. It. You're like, oh, why is it going? Yeah. Um, then this. I'll let you do this. Already has some. Uh, so here's what I usually do with this. Um, and I don't know where my Arctic Silver spot. It already is. has a heat sink cream on it. Yeah, you can. You can on these. You can. I uh, usually, if I'm building like a gaming PC, I wipe that stuff off if I'm going to go with that, and I go with some Arctic Silver Five. Uh, on this, I'm not too worried about it. Um, again, this is. We're using a 6100, 3.7 gigahertz, i3. Um, that's really just what was available around here. We try to get a lot of this stuff local, support our local Micro Center guys. Even in this time and dire need where they've changed all the rules on uh, graphics cards, we're still supporting them at least on the the memory and the, the uh, motherboards and CPUs. Somebody's asking, is a 1,000 watt power supply really enough for a six card 1060 grade? Yes. That power supply is going to be more than enough. We're going to show you guys. The only thing I'm hoping is I didn't look at these ones is that they're not dual uh, dual power requirements, but they shouldldn't be. Um, if they're a six and an eight pin, then we're going to be in trouble. But if they are a single, which I think they're just a single six, maybe a single eight, we should have more than enough for this. Uh, Don't need to. I have a new solution. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're gonna. Open up a couple of these real quick and take a look. If uh, this is revolutionary, you better pack this right after this. Video. Yeah, okay. These ones are a little mini. These are the smaller ones. I think these are the single fan ones. Single fan, six gigs, single six pin. So we should be more, we are in more than enough good shape for that. Um, this thing, once we're done, um, this machine will be about, we should get it to about 690 to 770 watts at max um, under a full load and that's overclocked. So that's what our target is on this tonight, is a six rigs at 700 watts. So we'll just see if we can do that and show you guys how that's done. Uh, that's one of the advantages of using NVIDIA and uh, now this is going to be a little slower uh, speed wise than like a 570. Um, 570 is get about 27.5 mega hash. We're, we should be able to get these to about almost 24 mega hash tonight per card. Um, but we will be using about 100 watts less power um, than like a 470 rig. Okay, a pen. Uh, you can. Measuring out. Uh, yeah. There's a. Uh, I need a tech oh, yeah, support over. question. Uh, what do we got? If one of your cards drops dramatically in hash rate, like four, temp's fine, no stability issues that you can see, where would you first look? If the, if the hash rate is what? Has dropped like about four mega hash. Um, feed it more power. Do you have a power underclock on it? Can you explain what you're doing there, Mike? Yep, I'm doing three inches apart, um, about a half inch on each end, and that should go all the way across. Yep. So you're using just a uh, just a wet dry erase marker made for a whiteboard. We can kind of just measure it out. And this is really just for the spacing. Usually, so you can get these a little smaller. We're making sure that there's enough room for these to breathe. Um, this is really kind of my seven card uh, design, usually uh, case, but this is going to give them more. I'm sorry about that. I'm not helping you. I screwed you up. Um, this should give more than enough room for this to breathe and, and not have to require any external cooling of any sort. Um, I always recommend putting a fan or something. If you got the time, the, the, you're okay with the audio of an external fan. Good, got six. That's five. Space. 
Oh, you yeah, have the spaces there. Five and then six. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, let's put that bag over the board. Yeah. So you can you can pre-drill. Usually I pre-drill the the graphics cards. We kind of got it jumped ahead. Um, that way you're not having to cover your motherboard for the the metal shavings and risking it. Um, you can wrap it and make sure that you're good or not causing any uh, metal shavings, I'll hold that. The who? The one sitting on board. Yeah, good call. Yeah, forgot that. Should we do the bag first in? The, no, that's fine. The bags. <laughs> no, that's fine. You can put them in the keep it. You, some of the cards that come in the bags, you can kind of put them up there, leave the bag on, screw through the bag, and just tear the bag with the card on it. That way you're making sure that there's no metal shavings in there. I'm going to take a can of air after this and make sure that we're nice and cool um, space-wise. Again, normally you would do it without the motherboard there. We're fine with doing that. I'm going to show you this piece here. There's no, uh, should be no issues there. We'll hit it with can air after this. Here, give me a one-two and I'll open it. We'll, t we'll show you guys the risers that we're using. And if you guys are just like a gamer that's just joined and stuff and you're like, I hate you mining dudes. You guys are killing it for me. What I'm, what I'm gonna counter is say you probably got a, you probably got a nice gaming card in there, bro. You should uh, be gaming at the, in the afternoon, in the evening, and then at night you should have a miner set up. You could down clock it some. You don't have to kill your card, and just hedge a little at night. Set it up with some library coin or Messiah coin. You know, if Ethereum's got too much of uh, too much, you know, where you're not gonna get much to get you know enough cards or enough uh coins you can you can mine some of the other coins that don't have a huge amount of bandwidth and then just catch their rise when bitcoin rises you know i've seen a lot of that with people that were doing monero you know monero wasn't worth a lot xmr is the ticker on that and now it's like 36 dollars you know so the same thing happened or it's actually more than that it's like 50 isn't it monero is 50 now 53 or something uh, yeah the same thing happened with the cred the cred's 36 you know and the folks that were mining that so if you had a single card you want to get into it you go down there find do some research on the different coins download the mining software and then after you're done gaming and now you can fire that miner up help help keep up the network and get rewarded for doing it just open up the rest yeah let's get, let's get them all stacked out Maybe one more. here jay let's split this come on you all three done at the same time? Uh, we only have two more to do. Uh, that box is? That box is extra. Extra, okay. Got an extra one. God, I just opened the wrong side two seconds ago. You got any other questions coming through? Yeah. I'll answer some questions while, while we're getting these. Together. Oh, keep the plastic toys in mind. Yeah, sorry, uh, rip headphone users. Yeah, they give you a post for it. Yeah, if you guys got questions on cards or anything like that, you guys can ask. Uh, <laughs> we should have. Uh, What's the lifespan of a rig. Uh, lifespan of a rig. So uh, the longest one I had running was a 5870 ATI. It lasted from early 2012 on Bitcoin and finally died out. Uh, at 
I want to say that was late 2016. So four years. And it just, it actually, I just kept it running, even though it wasn't even that that efficient. Screws. Screws. Yeah, right here. Um, I think I even had like a 9700 Pro. If anybody remembers those AMD cards, I had a 9700 Pro. Uh, I know there's some there's some retro folks in here that had some of those things. That card that was like the card to have. ATI 9700 Pro. I had, I had a uh, it was a video uh, card. I had a, I think it was the All in Wonder edition. I think that was the name. Somebody can correct me on that, but I think that's what they called it. Thank you. We'll pull this plastic off after uh, we get this thing going. I think I blew up in your face a little. Again, this is these are some pretty little cards for this rig, um, but it does have the room to expand. I always say go a little a little larger if you can, like this, because if you do end up turning this into a seven card rig at some time, or you get bigger cards, let's say Vega comes out and you end up switching these out. Um, Wherever, yeah, right, because this is these don't have back plates, so we don't want to get too close. Up. Yep. Uh, we've mined with lots of different 1060s, not these particular ones. That's why it's good that you're going to see these tonight. I have absolute faith that they'll be fine. Uh, well, yeah, they're going to, once they get hot, they'll, they'll sort of push them up on us. Yeah. Do you think the Zotac version of 1060s would be any different than. So, the one thing, I, here's what no, I'll leave, say. Leave it on for now. Yeah, we can check it out once it's going. Give you something to do when it's run. Um, so yeah, you definitely want it to pull off the plastic. If not, it's just gonna twist up and be all crazy. Let's get this off and pull that. And what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna move this real quick. And then we're gonna, let's, let's sweep that up. That way we don't pick up anything. With, uh, here. That way, when I, use the can of air, we don't uh, cause more damage than we want. So we're gonna sweep up this kind of area here, and then we'll get the can of air on the rig, make sure it's good. Let you do the honors to that, Mike. Set that there. We can just blow outward. I'll get out of the way. Just kind of give it a little where we were doing stuff and on the graphics cards, and then we'll rip headphone users. If you have, mute your uh, your thing here. Here, it's probably got a foot. It's childproof. It's Mike's Exactly why I can't use it. Yeah, it's twisted up. I don't think Mike's ever used a can of air. Hold on. <laughs> You're like, give it to me. Like, uh, wait a minute. There you go. All right there. All the technology in the world and can of air owns us. This is an ultra duster. If you don't have this exact model, your rig will not work. <laughs> Yeah, hit there. You can get a little bit. Crossing them up. You don't want to turn it upside down here. Just, just making sure that all that metal parts, I think we're good. If there were any, are now expunged from that. You guys can kind of see. I'll see if I can get a little close up here of the card set up. This, the way that they're set right now, we flip it around, you guys can see it, kind of, they rest up against that, that board, I think most of you get that, I just wanted to show and make sure, 
You understand how that works? That's a good shot. Um, I'm going to pull all these little rubber protectors off. Help on that part. So now what I do here is this is the point where I put the power supply in. But I do not, and I repeat, I do not plug any cards in. When we start to set this motherboard up, it is not going to have any of the cards plugged in. You're saving yourself a lot of trouble when you just get the actual board configured and ready for cards. And then you can switch it over and try that. Are we going to hey, do uh, Simple Mining's NVIDIA tonight? The, the beta? Do we have that on the stick? Oh. I don't have it on a stick, but I have it downloaded. Okay, so... I need to get that where is that uh, processor... What? The processor uh, holder. The this? The... We throw that part off to the side. We're going to clean this part up here. And we are going to start to get this thing plugged in. I'm going to switch your spots. Um, you know, hold this. Hold this on. Because I'm going to get started getting it plugged in and then we're going to we'll go through the board. Um, so right now, what I'm doing is not that because we need to get the power supply. So you're going to put the power supply on like I'm going to make sure that we get this. The power supply we're using tonight is the 1000 G3 from uh, and this is EVGA Supernova. Um, Again, the thousand for the six cards is enough for the the GTX 1060. Uh, you know, somebody asked me a question earlier, and I kind of got I stopped, and I'm sorry for not responding back to you. On is one is the Zotac or the other 1060s better than the others? So here's the way this kind of works: is from our observation, is the platform. When I say a platform, I am talking the a 1060 versus a 10, the 1070 versus a 1080. Where is the thing for this? Let me get this off here now. Um, the platform in general has a base a base hash rate. That's uh, the 1060 start out of the box at about 19, 19 to 19 for somewhere around there. No matter which one you have. Um, some are uh, you might get 20 in like the real high end ones, like the for the win edition 1060. Um, just because naturally the the memory's overclocked, the the GPU's overclocked, and you're gonna get a little bump. Um, you don't do any BIOS mods on those. So you're only doing soft mods to the GPU and the, the CPUs on NVIDIA cards. The platform itself, the, the higher end cards are usually been processed, they're the better processors, the better memory. Um, they can they can hit the high, higher echelons of the memory. Stuff like, um, you know, the thousand megahertz overclock that's stable stuff. Uh, at a minimum set, every 1060 I've tested, and right now we're at about six different brands. This would be the seventh brand. Every one of them has been able to do 125 memory or 125 core and 650 memory. Every one of them have done that, and that's resulted in at least 22.8 to 23 mega hash. So as a platform, three gig and six gig, you should be fine for the the low 20s. Um, if you want to get to 24 or 24 and some change. Uh, we're going to have to set this down. Um, this is a thin. So on, on these, the, the G3s are small. They're smaller than like the other EVGA 1000 uh, watts. Uh, pr and so on the rig like this, we have the one inch. The actual uh, plug right there, usually you can kind of get to the side here. You're not going to be able to do that with this, with this piece here. So we're going to turn it kind of just kind of sideways. Uh, let's see here if we're going to go that way. Well, it's got that nice eco button here. So what we'll do is we'll we'll, we'll pull this knot. It's not going to be able to go all the way over, but we're going to get as far as it can. And then what we'll do is we'll mount that differently. We'll show them how with those extra pieces that we had. So we had extra pieces of this, and we could put right here in the in the back corner here. We can put a small piece right here, and then we'll screw that down, and that'll hold that in place. We'll show you guys in a little bit. We'll get this right now just plugged in and going, and. Uh, show you how to mount that you can also zip tie these I've, I've done larger zip ties around there just to hold this the bottom line is you just hold this this piece here uh, which is your power supply we're gonna go ahead and get these what we'll do is let's keep all the VGAs to the side you need those you'll need that, what does that mean? the 24x one should be the big one yeah. should be this big guy right here 
So yeah, you can go ahead and pre-plug that in there. Let's go ahead and get all, let's get all the relevant pl cables plugged in here. So we're going to use all of the. This particular power supply has four different connectors for the VGAs. Um, it should be a two by two, and then a couple just main, which will give us six, which will be perfect for this. You know, some of the people are asking, you know, if we can get this down to like 690 watts, why wouldn't we use the 750? Mainly because it's not predicated on the power. This is probably the biggest point, and we're going to have to put a, a note in the, the actual live stream to make sure people understand this. It's not necessarily about the amount of power uh, it can output versus your rig. It's also if you have enough connections to plug in your stuff. So, like, this is six cards. It has six connectors for PCI Express, or PCI uh, ePower um, for the actual rails. To have enough in there, you're going to need at least a 1,000 watt power supply. I think some of the more higher end, like maybe uh, the Seasonic like 960s and stuff have enough to... Yeah, you're going to go right to the motherboard. And since we didn't put the metal there, I'm going to hold it. Just push hard to the air click. Good? Should be flat. Yep. Yeah, you want to make sure that's all the way plugged in. You'll find out real quick. You're gonna wanna. You're gonna probably wanna have that kind of up, up here. You're gonna be plugging more stuff in. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, just put it right there in the corner. It ain't going anywhere. It's fine. Yeah. So we're gonna want the. We're gonna want all the. We're gonna want yeah, one we'll CPU. Yeah. One CPU. I, I, I got. Yeah. You got it. You got it. You got it. All right. So why don't you go there and then all the VGAs. I did this before in tenth grade. Or <laughs> I don't know why. Um. So yeah, so the platform in general is good and that's kind of going back. So um, any of the 1060s, any of the 1070s bottom line, if you can get them and they're cheap right now that's uh, and you're wanting to get into mining, that's kind of your go-to. Really because of the AMDs are out of stock. I mean the 570s, the we try to link, we try, we try to hit the the different searches and parse the internet and then we try to post it out there on bitsbetripping.com. If we see inventory out there, we try to post it on our Discord channel. We're trying to post it out there. There's a lot of also other folks out there looking out for each other. Um, I, there is a really good Snipe website and I don't know if uh, Blueberry or anybody on there that has channel mod can uh, post that site um, which kind of shows you all the different GPUs that are available across a whole bunch of different websites. But That's a solid source too. I mean, granted, we love that you guys go out there, you guys hit our affiliate links, but man, at this point, man, just if you can get GPUs, go find them. You know, uh, if we have them out there on our aff affiliate, we will, um, yeah, it's the CPU right there. Do fully modular PSU yeah. require motherboards to run as a super chat? Do, no, not, not at all. Um, and there should be a device in there. So there's a, uh, do we still have that link for the two P, uh, power supply controller the add to p psu or did you nuke it i nuked it okay so there's there is a if you can find that and there's a link to that site real quick so we're going to show you a little a little thing it's like it's like i don't know like maybe 10 bucks 12 bucks where you can take two modular power supply you can take any power supply honestly and it'll control so the power supplies come with where is it at this little guy most of the bigger power supplies over like 750 will come with this little adapter here. What this little adapter did was probably a few, uh, a few, yeah, the little cam. Plug one card in. The, yeah, the, the, the adapter um, power supply companies came up with this little guy that essentially takes uh, the, your lead that turns on the power supply and a ground and bonds them like safely and what i mean safely it just allows you to turn the power supply on so like, if you're wondering what this little thing was you plug this into the 24 pin on another power supply and then when you switch that power supply on um you're when you're over here and you power that on it actually the power supply will turn on you know with this guy plugged in um the thing is though with with rigs is you just don't want constant power always running well you can run that and you got to manage it by turning that on and off you can get this other device that we'll link to you guys here that allows that when you turn on that first power supply, it'll activate the second one as long as you have this little device plugged in, right? So it was probably a couple power supply companies back in 2013. Then when they saw us do a review, like one of our first videos on how to, over, to create one of these manually with like a wire and like tape in your power supply, and they probably freaked out and they invented this and started putting it in power supplies. 
we got some messages back back in the day from power supply companies saying, hey, we started putting these in there. Stop uh, teaching people how to burn their house down. So uh, we recommend using that or using with a, uh, if you're going to manage your rigs, if you're not going to manage your rigs very often, then you need to get one of those power, uh, it's called a, a PSU-2. I don't know if you found that. Yeah, add the PSU. Just make that a, a loop in there. And it's, yeah. You want to plug one in, right? Uh, no, no, we're going to go right to the motherboard, right the straight to the motherboard, so we can, yeah, we'll leave that in play, we're going to plug all these in right now, and just get this, just get this power supply going, um, I'm going to help you, that way we can speed this up, and then we're going to get this all plugged in, we're going to go straight to the, we're going to give the motherboard some power here, and we're going to get into programming this uh, PSU here in the next five minutes, VGA, is that... Uh, yeah, they want BG one that would be good. Yeah, BG there. Got it. Yeah. With that, we're gonna need we're gonna need uh, at least three of the SATAs. They don't matter. We're gonna fill them. Yeah. Every one of them. So we're plugging in all the cables. So we're gonna use all the VGA ports on this power supply. We're gonna use pretty much almost. Uh, we're going to use at least three SATA strands. When I say a SATA strand, I'm saying this right here. Actually, we're, does this have enough? This only is SATA. It has two PATA, or one PATA here. So we're going to have to use these SATAs with the extan expansions because this thing only came with one PATA. This is SATA. This is PATA, kind of four pin Molex, kind of old school. Reminds me of, uh, you know, building stuff in high school, you use the four pins. Um, Usually you can plug those straight into the back of the risers and not have to use the, the SATA connectors, but it's what it is. Are the... You got any more VGAs? Yeah, one VGA right here. That'll fill up the VGA. We'll plug the rest of these in. We're gonna do um, two... Wait, wait, where we at? I'll just use the half one. Yeah, you can plug those in. We're not, yeah, they're not just to get them pre. You'll use the other, uh, the other section, yes. Is this the, yeah. Stretch. Yep. So we are able to go singles, and then we're using a double there, which is fine. That's more than that. This is not drawing that much power. We'll move those. This one power supply has enough to connect to that, but that's what I'm saying. If you, if we would have did a 750 here, we would we would have been uh, not good enough. An 850 would have been fine for this. You guys can actually do an 850 P2 uh, power supply from EVGA that comes with three of these connections with with uh, the doubles. So it'll have the 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 six, the eight, and the six pin, all three of them, which will go to six cards, a six six pins. So you can use an 850P2 on any uh, builds that you have where um, you only have six pin cards. But I recommend just going ahead and getting the thousand. Uh, just that way you have the, the headroom. So we're going to use three of these because we're going to use two, two of these connections per sets of cards. So we're going to use three strands because you do not want to put more than four ever on one of these like this one only has three but this one to get really hot if you have three cards on this so you don't want to use just two of them across six cards you want to use two of them across each of the sets of cards which means you're going to use three of these generally speaking how much does this rig cost to purchase well if if if, if everything wasn't crazy priced um, right now, I mean these aren't too bad, but you can get these. Uh, the six, these are six good cards, so these are what like two sixty, two fifty, something like that. Two sixty, two seventy. Um, you can get these down to like eighty nine or one eighty nine, one sixty nine if you can find them on the three gig side. So you got six of those. You got a motherboard that's probably one hundred twenty five, one hundred thirty. Memory eight gigs, probably seventy five. Um, processors probably another 150, 160 with an i3. You could get a cheaper processor. Overall, most rigs were anywhere from 1,800 to 2,400 dollars in this day and age in pricing. The problem is getting all the hardware, and then you got about 30 or 40 dollars here in, in uh, per rig cost. 
Um, that's if you can build it yourself, if you can go out there and build it. I mean, if you're having somebody build it for you, you're going to pay a premium for that. And if you want specific cards, um, you're going to have a premium there. You've got to go around this. Dual mining broke his cards. Dual mining probably didn't break the cards. Dual mining probably broke your power supply. Um, dual mining is no different. You're just leveraging a, a little. You're, you're on every other clock cycle when the graphics card's processing the hashes. You're just you're you're leveraging the card a little more. It's going to use more energy, which is going to drive more. What more than happened is you probably burned up your riser if it was pulling more energy. What happens is if you're pulling more energy to each of those pieces, you're probably burned up your risers. What I would say at a minimum set is go get another pack of risers, plug them in, I bet you you're fixed. It's very hard to burn up cards, guys. It's very hard. The cards will just puke before they'll burn up. I, I rarely have burned up cards ever. In all the mining that we've done, I've, I've, very, I've bricked cards because I've tried to modify them, but... I rarely burned up cards. The only times I ever burn up cards is if uh, fans die. the fans die and I just have it on and I'm not looking at it and it burns up. The cards rarely go out. I guarantee it's either the power supply or it's the, uh, we want to turn this one off. We're going to get, I'm going to get over there and we're going to get plugged in. We're going to move the camera over to here. Um, or I can walk you through if you want to try it. I mean, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we're going to try to get this plugged in. We got a super chat question. Are dual fans not needed for mining? Our dual. What was the question? These are single fan cards. Uh, no, you don't. You don't need uh, dual fans for. I mean, the 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 dual mining really is predicated on memory. So the three gig cards, I haven't tried on actually on the dual mining for the three gig card. I don't think it'll do too well just because of the memory spacing with the Ethereum and another. But the six gig cards should mine fine. It's the same way that the four gig cards don't mine very well on dual mining, where the eight gig cards do awesome. Um, there's enough space, there's enough memory uh, for those to, to do their part. Um, but no, I mean, it, it, it should be fine. If it starts to really heat up the card, um, we'll put an extra fan on it. But all you're doing is you're just taxing the card a little more. It's, 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 it's filling up every bit of that clock cycle with, with uh, effort um, than just expending, you know, the card's at 100% GPU, but it's only, it's only processing so much stuff in each clock cycle. The dual mining is just filling that, that entire, uh, that entire bandwidth up with, with processed stuff. So, I mean, that's why you really see the, me the memory differences, but a six gig card should do dual mining fine. We'll actually, when we get this configured in a little bit here, we'll activate the dual mining on these to see what they do from decred, at least at a minimum set. Get this powered on. We got juice here. Somebody said this looks like the scene from Signs when you see the reflection of the alien in the TV. Oh, did you see me coming? <laughs> yeah, you can see the ghost of the rig in the TV. Nice. I can see that. So we're gonna we're gonna do again. None of the cards are plugged in. We haven't done any of the risers yet. We're we're just gonna work the motherboard and we're gonna work settings on the motherboard. We'll zoom in on this and you guys will be able to go through this with us as we're doing it. So we're, let's get the uh, yeah, yeah. keyboard and the mouse over here. Oh, okay. You got it. I'm, I'm, I'm pushy. I'm pushy. I'm pushing him. I'm trying to keep He's all. Like, I'm trying to keep all my boxes and stuff in order because there's. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is like best buy in here. I'm like which is mine? Cross contaminate. <laughs> which, which is mine? <laughs> So we're gonna get this together here. Um, I, I'll get you network. Cause usually one of the very first steps that we'll do is we'll make sure the motherboard is updated with the latest BIOS. You just right wanna there. strip this thing with like a screwdriver on the chest? No, no, we got, we got the... Uh, what are you thinking? We got, we're not, we're not hot wiring it. We got a whole ah, you're so fancy. strand of, whole strand of uh, power uh, down there, bottom right. So right here is what we're talking about, a little, little button switch. And this, you want to put that on there? You know where it's going? Here, I'll do it. No, it's somewhere on the bottom right. Well, it's usually right there. there. It's somewhere around there. And you just change this up? It looks like 
something about the case. You know. Jumper. Yeah, used to the right here. System fan. I love new boards. Audio system fan. Yeah, this has got to be the jumper. Does it look inside the box? Does it have some special now new connection that? Where's the box at for that motherboard? I don't know. There, so there's a looks like an I/O interface, and it looks like it could be plugged in, and I bet you that's where it's at, and they want you to plug it into that that top part there. Look for like a a, a, a jumper extender. Nope. Bust out the manual. Give me my camera because I'm gonna show these guys this. Show them that we're not complete idiots. It's one of those. That's fine. Normally, it's like right here. Is this, can they not see? They can't see it. Expand that. Make that bigger. That screen bigger for them. I'll do one better. back oh. all right sorry guys for the sound we we're laughing at ourselves because they had the this msi board put the table for the power switch and where everything's at over a different set of uh jumpers it's off to the side and it's referencing another one so yeah we should be there we need you need juice on that so uh, no you is didn't this, plug that in yet is this down yeah, I'll check that yeah on scene uh Two. On scene two, you're going to have to have the audio. I'll have to fix that. Yeah, it's no big deal. Um, so we're going to take this and we're going to plug in the... Uh, you got it right there. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm doing it this way because I want to have the... Uh, the uh, we're going to make sure that we have the kilowatt because I want to be able to show people the power usage of this thing. Another shout out to the NASA shirt. Yeah. Yes. Anybody that works for NASA on here, we love what you do. We'll see here. I need. Send job applications. <laughs> okay. Send job applications. There you go. SpaceX, right? Let's leave that there. That's what we're going to plug into that. I'm plugging this in down here. I want to make sure we have water. Here we go. You want to plug, plug this in. And then we'll get this plugged in. Alright. Uh, that all plugged in? Yep. Should be plugged in there. And since we have no it lights up, oh my god, it works. It's hot. All right, so that should be on that screen. Do we want to get the camera out? Okay, this camera's pretty much on the screen. So we should have. You yeah. got to change the input. The which one? The input. No, the input should be fine on that. No, that's not good then. No, it's, it's just plugged into the USB. Or it's plugged into the, uh, that's the right input. Yeah, no, it's fine. So it, it, it came up. It takes its, uh, the, the, there, I'm glad that it showed you guys. So you saw that it was just sitting there showing for input for, so the motherboard will go through a power on self test. That'll take a cool second. And then it's going to sit there and scan each of those PCIe ports because that's probably what it's set to to go first. 
So then it's gonna go bam, 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 right down them. And then it's gonna come and say, well, I guess you need to onboard video. And this one actually has a DVI and a HDMI video. So it's gonna hit the DVI and then it's gonna hit the HDMI and now it popped up. So it took a little bit. Since there's no drives in it right now, it's gonna come right into the BIOS. So the very first thing that I go and do um, is on this one, this is a new, new thing, so uh, we're going to want to find the if this has automatic updates for, uh, go to Advanced F7, and we're going to want to go to, uh, if you can update the BIOS, use the USB to flash the BIOS. So they, do, they are not cool like ASUS where it does the automatic DHCP set. Click this just in case, hit yes. This should go into flash mode. We want to make sure we have the latest BIOS on this. I cannot tell you how many times I've dealt with stuff where I didn't know why it wasn't working and then all it took was a BIOS update. So I start with the BIOS updates right away. I just want the latest. Um, and then I'll work my way back if I find out that the latest BIOS is what ends up causing my problems. That's usually less of a chance. Uh, we're entering the flash mode. We're probably going to have to copy the BIOS over to a USB. Um, yep, so hit, just leave that there. We're gonna leave that. So we're gonna put, we're gonna copy the latest BIOS real quick for this board onto a USB drive. Hold up, let's do it on mine. Here's a, okay, which one? Oh, we're gonna put the OS on mine, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, this is just, yeah, get yours. I already have an OS. Huh? Is it done or is it built? It's I want to put the OS on this. Okay. You close. Well, that's good. Can you close it? Can you put? Can you copy that OS up to another computer, and I'll do it on that thing. Yeah, give me that. We're gonna go ahead and. So tonight we're gonna try something also a little different. We're gonna get this on the this thing configured here with the latest BIOS, but then we're gonna. Uh, there is a new NVIDIA version. It's a uh, beta on simple mining. So simple mining put out a note saying that he's made a beta version of simple miner to work with Nvidia cards. So we're going to give that a world. If we can't get that, we're going to, we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. We're going to just try it. We're going to build this right now. I have a backup drive with a fresh build of windows on it. We will plug that in if this doesn't work and we won't spend a lot of time on that. I want to show you guys a working build tonight. Um, just build one. Yeah, just do this. This one should be good. Uh, and let's plug it in the back because it's going to be faster. So, do you want me to just bang on this one? Yes. Okay. Have Sandos, okay. Yep. This is this one is the... No. We need, we need the BIOS right now. I'll, I'll get the BIOS. I'll get the BIOS right now. That was the Windows stick, by the way. Okay. Yeah, the first one you plug in is Windows. We are downloading the BIOS right now. Jason, is there, are there any, do you have any questions? I'll answer questions while this is downloading. I'm going to fill up time. Um, Mike, you want to do this BIOS? You know what? Yeah. What's so good about simple mining? No, no, no. Just look the board, right? The BIOS, you got down low BIOS, and it's already a box. Yep. Mike. Yep. What's so good about simple mining? What's so good about simple mining? It works very well. Um, the, uh, it's, li it's Linux based. Um, Simple mining uh, allows you to remote manage the rigs. Um, it lets me know if it was went if the rigs went down. It allows me to push changes to it from my mobile phone. Um, I can do. I mean, you can do a lot of that stuff in Team Viewer if you have uh, Windows set up. But the uh, to be able to control the rigs, all of them, like as a farm, is really really convenient. Um, once you really have a consistent build, and if you have one rig acting up or one card acting up, you can kind of see all that stuff in Simple Mining. So we're getting this BIOS downloaded. We're doing that right now. 
We're going to update this and then we're going to quickly configure this. And then after we're done configuring the motherboard, I let it reboot and then I start plugging it. I'm just going to go a couple cards in the beginning, just make sure that it's seeing it. We're going to plug in Simple Mining's OS just to see if it works with NVIDIA. If not, or it starts running into issues or whatever, I'm going to immediately plug in the Windows drive that's already built. It's a fresh build of Windows. It's already built. Um, and we'll just let it, we'll let it auto configure itself right now with this board. Um, if for whatever reason that doesn't work because it was built off another uh, OS, then we'll quickly build Windows. It's on an SSD. It won't take that long. Um, and then we'll get all this rest of this built done for you. You guys right here on the screen. So I think the BIOS here is almost getting there. Um, there is a problem with Jack's, like uh, the client wallet, I believe, on the Windows system. They were having some issues where there was a somebody could take advantage of uh, some of the way the security works and gain access on the Jack's, like on the Windows version. So if you have that, I would recommend kind of not using that right now until they get that whole fixed. Let's see here. Where did that put that? That's the Windows. Oh, I might have wrote it to the wrong USB. I had two USBs plugged in there. This is a Windows boot disk. One second. I got it downloaded to. So the mobile jacks was okay. It was just the. Mobile jacks is fine. I mean, here's the deal. Mobile jacks is. Somebody would have to gain access to your phone with my encryption. I mean, it's, it'd be, unless you're running on like a rooted phone and your, your stuff local, I mean, somebody cracking that is like, dude's in the wrong business, let's just say that. Like, you should be like, not cracking people's phones for some easily crypto. You should be doing like, uh, something good in the world, man. That's some, that takes some serious effort to start cracking uh, mobile wallets. But uh, yeah, I mean, Windows systems can be compromised. And if, you know, they're, this should now, when you hit refresh, should show up. Um, since I pulled that out, it might not, let's do a reboot real quick on it. Do a reboot. Like uh, what is it? Control delete. I pulled the drive back out real quick because I don't want it to sit there and look at the uh, look at the USB. We'll let this reboot real quick. It's just now power recycled. We're gonna let it. We're gonna go back into the BIOS mode. We're gonna go put the BIOS on it. Update that. It's exiting flash mode because that was the last mode that it was in when we rebooted. Go back to F7 real quick. We're gonna go from there, and then we're gonna click down to the use USB flash from BIOS down here. You need a, oh, right behind you, right behind you, right behind you. We're still working on the motherboard BIOS? Yeah, this is the my motherboard BIOS. We're just gonna update it. We, get, we downloaded the BIOS. That's okay. I don't know what, why it was trying to change this the clock speeds of the processor, but that's, a unique thing for this board, evidently. Plugging in the USB with the BIOS on it that we downloaded from another computer. It should read that. Entering flash mode. It's different with each board. So people send us messages and they're like, hey, you know, uh, it's that guy right there. 
Yeah, click that. Yes. BIOS is updating. That's uh, they get straight to business. That wasn't even a. That wasn't even a. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I guess you're ready. Let's do this. And it's right into it. So you guys seen it first here on uh, MSI boards. Don't uh, don't mess around. You better hope you got the right BIOS downloaded. Uh, we'll have to link that BIOS. I'll put that file out there just to let people know which one that is for this board. But that's click and go. I'm assuming that if it was the wrong one, like it was the wrong board, it would at least give you an error. I'm making a very unsafe assumption on that. Um, I don't know if I'm even on frame. I'm not even talking, like looking at the camera when I'm on frame. Well, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. They don't need to see me. So we're doing this just to make sure that we have the latest stuff. This uh, BIOS looked like it was about four versions old. So this is from uh, looks like March thirty first. Or that, yeah, that's uh, March thirty first BIOS. These usually take about two minutes, three minutes, and then after that, we're going to pull this drive. Is the other uh, simple mining OS? Oh, no, heck. Why are you, it, 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 it didn't look right. Well, it doesn't, definitely doesn't look right now. I don't know why this is taking so long. It was faster up there because this is a 3 point off slot. Yeah, this is a killer. This is a 3 point off slot too. I don't know what's up there. I don't want to pull it in with the camera system. That's okay. What, what we'll do is the simple mining OS might come after. We'll, we'll pull the Windows drive and do that first then. There, there's a new one in our, our, the thing writing, it's taking forever. It's, it's only doing five megabytes per second. It should be doing about 40. All right, so now that's updated. Now we're gonna get back into the BIOS and this is where we configure it. And the main things we're gonna be looking for are 4G decoding and we're gonna be setting PCI slot speeds. Those are the two main kind of uh, activities that you're gonna be doing in a BIOS. And that's really just to make sure that you have enough I.O. space uh, above the 4G limit and then that you are, have the right speed for the slots. So let's go ahead and go back into F7. And let's take a look at settings. And there on the left, we're going to go right through from the top. Let's start from the top because I, I don't know this BIOS. Okay, so nothing in there. That kind of gives you some basics. We're going to hit, uh, uh, go into DMI information real quick. Motherboard BIOS is hide all kinds of stuff, so I'm gonna make sure, okay, hit back on that. We're gonna go through each one of these. Back one more time. Uh, advanced. Okay, PCI subsystem setup, we're starting in there. Link speed, that's the first one we're gonna change. We're gonna set that on this one to Gen 2. Now, there are some boards, and I think the MSI is one of them. We're gonna set this to Gen 1 on the MSIs. The MSI Carbon requires Gen 1. We're gonna go Gen 1 on this one. So let's go Gen 1 on this one. We'll come Gen, back. What does that mean? It's the, it's the speed of the, the, the slot, essentially. We're going to Generation 1 is 4X. We're gonna go that too. As, as the generations got faster and the bigger and the bigger buses, um, they went to higher generation. So Gen 1 is, because we don't need a lot of bandwidth, and essentially you, you need a lot of uh, PCI E lanes whenever you're, uh, when you have those, those set. We're gonna leave the timer at 32 uh, PCI bus. We need that right there. Look at this board, guys. Look what that says. That's a first for me on this one. Above 4G memory limit, cryptocurrency mining. I'm gonna say this board was thought of on cryptocurrency mining. So we wanna have that enabled and back. APC settings, which is advanced power management. Our, it's uh, That's the actual, I guess they mean by the lights down here. That's fine. Power, I guess they put power management under power management. Um, turn off the audio controller. There's no reason for that to be on if you're mining. Unless you're going to plug in mod so we turn that off um the io is turned off from the serial which is good hit back on that so we turned off the hd audio on that um we're going now integrated graphics i leave all this the same this is fine it's obviously working on the integrated graphics card usb is fine super io configuration 
go into serial com port i turn these off guys i don't use that i turn off anything that i'm not using i don't want any power going to anything um turn off the parallel port you're not going to be doing any printing on this besides printing crypto what <laughs> <laughs> sorry i couldn't help myself uh power management setup we're gonna get in there now i put in this a restore after ac power loss that means if the power goes off in your house and i'm going to show you the script that we'll put in there we have it posted on our blog site that if the power goes off and the power comes back on if the power supply detects that the power's back on it's going to fire a rig right back up and then all you need to do is pair that with your windows startup to have your bat file that starts your miner to start up so your power goes off no sweat as long as everything comes back up the rig will come back up and the power is restored so you want to turn that on, power on, um, fault protection, uh, I, I would enable that just, just because, um, Windows OS configuration, Windows uh, 10 WF kill, this is different, I would put the uh, Windows uh, Go, go up to the top. I want to see what, they're, what they mean by that. Support Windows 10 disables other operating systems. Yeah, that's fine. Hit the enable on that. Um, disable 7. Disable 7. I don't know why, why. what the real difference sort of... It's probably their version of saying uh, uh, EFI mode, maybe. Um, internal GOP. Nope, that you're fine there. You can back out of that. Secure boot. That's for the internal graphics driver. Uh, wake up event setup. You don't need any of that. That's all the power on wake up settings. Uh, secure race. I would not do that. Okay, hit okay. That looks like just for uh, probably a DoD level wipe. And that's fine. That's your network connection. All right, hit back on that. All right, I, so that looks like a good setup to me. Uh, we went through all the settings. The other stuff on, the, on this board is the overclock. We're not going to mess with any of that because um, we don't want to overclock the actual GPU. There's no, our CPUs. There's no reason for all that. So we're just going to go ahead and now hit uh, escape. Hit the escape key. And it should allow us to. Oh no no hit no. Uh, hit the X up there. Maybe that that'll give it to us. Yes. Okay. So this is what I was looking for is a punch list of everything that's done. So you, you guys that are watching, kind of catching up, you guys can see, I'm gonna zoom in this so you can see the, the final punch list. If you're skipping through a video later on and you're like, what the hell did they do? And I don't wanna watch this idiot say this a few times. So you can get straight to the punch list. There's the punch list of everything that happened on this board. Again, the MSI SLI board uh, plus. All right, you go ahead and go yes to that. All right, now that should have everything configured to start put, put, plugging in some uh, some mining cards. So we're going to go ahead and let that reboot. I'm going to see it post again, because that way I know that it committed that to the power supply. I'm going to start opening up these, kind of get them laid out. We're going to get these plugged in. We're going to pull the Windows drive that's pre-configured right now. We'll test it in Windows, and then if time allows here we'll do uh, simple mining once it gets built we'll just fire it up and see if it fires up again i want this to be a full end-to-end -end, cradle to grave not cheating yourself uh final video i know it's going long i, I thank you guys some of you guys for bearing with us on it this would be really good for the uh the new folks hopefully kind of opening these up getting them all out it's all one all right, and then we can power this off. Let's just kill the power here, unplug it. I don't want any juice rolling through it. And then we can go through and we're gonna have to use these because they didn't give us enough of the uh, Molex connections. We just kind of make sure that they're, yeah, we can get zoomed in here. So we're, we're, we're plugging in each of these powered risers. These plug in one way. You just gotta really make sure that, that these wires are not pushing out. That's a key part. Because sometimes when you're pushing these in, you're like, why is this riser not working? It's because when you push these in, these things are cheap and they come from China. So, not saying that China's cheap. I'm just saying some of these things are lower cost items. And they're not going to be the most. So, like on this one, it pushed out. So, I was trying to finesse it and it pushed out just a little bit. So, I'm going to back it back out. 
I'm gonna make sure that, and you could, I don't know if you could see inside of that, you probably can't. I'm gonna push that back in there and make sure that this is making a good connection. This is less than ideal. Usually you go Molex straight into these. If we have a few of these that don't work out, I'm gonna to switch to the, at least we can get two of the cards on the four pin Molex. And push this back in. You get both of them in. this one at least on two of them and technically we can switch to if they're really less than ideal we can switch to um, we can switch some of these cables out with another power supply that I have that is has several of these available the four pins in place of the status. Alright. So I'm gonna use at least one of these strands with two four pins. So you need enough room to get between cards. We have three inch spacing here. So we're gonna go one here and we're gonna go one on the end. Again I'm just using the mole the four pin for a couple of these risers put all of these you get that one in there you're good and then that's going to be a strand for this so we're going to use one of the strands here and you can do these first two cards here just come right here and use like the first and the last yeah. that we have room we zoomed out and they can see this stuff i know is it good yeah. okay We have any other questions while we're kind of putting this together? We're essentially going to do all six of these two by two. Can you use the little can to get a close up of the risers? Yes. Which kind of what? Uh, this is, uh, what was this, pine? Pine. Yeah, it's pine. Yeah, you gotta make sure that that's all the way back up. Yeah, just go straight back. There you go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in, we're gonna get all these kind of set up and we're gonna kind of leave these unplugged for at least a couple of them. And we're gonna just start with a few cards in the beginning and get windows up, because I don't want to really trick windows on, on a first boot on a new board of like, tricked ya, here's six cards, good luck, bro. What's your favorite kind of riser? One that works. The best? Um, a favorite kind of riser, honestly, I like the newer uh, version 7S. This is a version six, which is fine too. The version 7S has the SATA connector. That's the real big difference. It's just a SATA connector versus a, uh, a four pin Molex. The six but packs of risers are hard to find. They're hard to find right now. Like I got those on Amazon and yeah, yeah I mean, you probably paid a penny for them. I mean, yeah. they're just not, they're not, it's unfortunate, but they're hard to find right now. So you're saying this part of the build is what you really can't find of how to connect these risers. So make sure you're showing. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll connect. So like, right now, normally guys, this is what I like doing right here. I like using the four pin Molex straight into the risers instead of using these little things. But this power supply does not have enough of these little four pins. Um, if for some reason we end up showing that we're having some problems here, circumstantially I have a whole bunch of packs of these and I'll just switch his, four, his SATAs out for four pins. And we'll just go four pins straight into this to make sure they're good connection. Most of your riser issues is right here and here, let me use the small camera. Go to uh, the other scene real
Could you guys hear me? I don't know if you guys can hear me or not in there. No, they can't. Okay. Well, just, could you expand that little screen? Like, in, the, in that one? Okay, we're going to expand this little screen. So what I was talking about here is most of your problem, like when I was pushing in that one, what I was trying to show you guys here is you can see, let me see if you can see this. You see how the one is kind of, here, let me zoom out a little further. The one on this is a little inset. It kind of went a little deeper right here. It's because when I started pushing in that four pin Molex, it started to kind of pull out and push out. You can you can't really see. I'm trying to get close without the camera focusing. Um, it so it's kind of crimped there, and I'm kind of pushing it back into its little spot. This is usually with the main predication of what ends up happening with these risers is you, you you try to install them, you put them in there, and then they back themselves out, and you don't even realize it. And you're like, why do I have this this risers having an issue? Most of the time, it's because it's not getting any power. And this is part of the reason why you guys see on some of our builds, you'll see ribbon cables, because I had tons of extra ribbon cables from old builds. And here's the deal with the ribbon cables. By and large, they freaking work. The problem is, is it pulls all the power from the board. And most of the ribbon cables that have the extra do the dongle like this that you guys see only has like this connector, which is just the ground. It's just grounding it. So it's not giving su supplemental power. So this one is kind of done. So we're not going to use that one. This one and this riser here. Let's make sure oh, we just missed that. The one's mine. You got yours connected there. You can go back to. Uh, There's only one hooked up right now. Okay. Did you connect three risers to one Molex cable? No. Two. There's only two. Can you repeat the question, please? I can't always hear. Uh, do we have three risers connected to Molex? No, we only have two. Right here is the one Molex, and we have two on the strand. That's it. Just two. We're just getting all these kind of set. We're going to have everything plugged in and ready. We're going to fire this up in a second. In the, right behind you yep. is the is the uh, the drive. We're going to unplug it. It's the little sand disc that's plugged in that purple rig. Yep, that guy. Just unplug it on both sides. We're going to pull that one over. That's the already built windows. Solder cord. cord. No, it's over in that box right there. No, I should have. It's, it's in your motherboard box, but there's cable there. Inside there, in the middle of that box, lift that box. Middle, straight down. Bags and bags of them. It's the SATA connector. So we're just getting all these plugged in. These are the USB extensions that go onto the risers. Do you have any other questions while we're waiting here? I'm just gonna hang these off to the side because we're not using these right now. Because we're gonna get a few of them plugged in and then we're gonna boot up Windows here. And again, this is already built Windows, so we should save you guys the time there. Common uh, fire hazards. What happened? Common fire hazards. Common fire hazards is plugging in more than uh, one riser, or plugging in more than three risers to a SATA cable. That's your common one. The second one is using these little adapters like this. And, and what I was showing you earlier, if the uh, adapter's pushed out, you could have some kind of issue there. We have um, a big solder cord. Huh? Yeah, we no, we got one. We got them over here. Go it's these. So you can come off of. You can come off right here. And plug this last one over here. Cheapest card right now is the 3 gig 1060. That's semi fast. You can technically get a a 1050 Ti. The floor of the one edition that we did was 125 dollars, and it it mined 13.4 Ethereum, 13.4 so uh, megahertz. Solda one does not matter. Any solda. The which one? Oh, this is my back, sorry. Keep me, keep me straight. All right, all right, I got that. You wanna get that one? All right, 
and then we're going to plug this part in and then we're, we're pretty much uh, good to go. We're going to hang these off to the side. We're just using one card. We're going to boot up Windows. We're going to make sure that it sees it. We'll actually start the mining software, make sure it's good, and then we're going to plug the other cards in. Everything's in. I'm excited that you guys got to see a cradle grade build tonight. Uh, hopefully this is refreshing if you're trying to get into this and figure out all the steps that you need. Let's be a little more. And we got this last one right here. I'll plug in here. All right. So we've got everything kind of off the side here. We're just leaving these ones kind of hang because these are powered. Um, they're not going to activate because they're not plugged into the motherboard. That's what kind of initiates them. Um, and we're going to go ahead and we'll sweat. And these are the two extra pieces we had because I went with the, the four pin Molex. So we have a couple extra pieces here. It's okay to have extra pieces as long as you're accounted for on the machine. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, do we have this plugged in? Yeah, we do. Let's turn that juice on. Let's give it juice here and fire up. So now that we have a drive plugged in, the BIOS should see that that drive is the primary and that it'll just fire up. Um, it's going to post. We, we sh it, it should, uh, it's right now confused because it sees a graphics card and it's trying to initialize it. It should click over and come onto the BIOS here. Let me, uh, Switch the camera. We can show you guys. So how many cards do you have plugged in right now? We have one card plugged in right now. And it's got one job. We have Windows out. And actually, because that one card's plugged in, and we didn't force it to do the onboard video, uh, unlike the ASUS, which will go into a port detection, it is not. So plug it into the card that's plugged in, which looks like it's this one. So your video right here. Can you show them one of the cords you used to plug it in again? Or to turn it on? To turn the computer on? Yeah. You turn this off? Okay, no, they can't see from there. And we got to make sure. Where's the yeah. little camera? Yeah, yeah. No, I know. She's asking about this cord. Oh yeah, here I'll get another one. I'll get another one. That one in. There we go. Big TV, just little TV. Uh, that card is not spinning. Huh? Well, it's okay that it's not spinning. It's not spinning. Let's here. Let's pop, shut down. And we want it in the 16x slot first. Down. Just kill it. So we're plugging, we're plugging the first card just in the 16x main slot that you'd normally plug if you had, a, if you were putting together a PC, PCI riser. And we got that. We went in and just plugged the, the the video into that one card. You can go in there and force it just to always use the USB or the use the local um, video, the built-on video on the ASUS boards that we usually use the. Z270 primes, those auto detect on default. So it doesn't matter that you have eight cards plugged into them or not. As if you have a um, your video device plugged into the thing, it just automatically sees it. We could set that up in this one, but we, we didn't. So it's okay, we got that video plugged into the very first card, the only one that's plugged in. Windows, since it was already built, is seeing this new board and it's right now getting the devices ready. The reason why I didn't plug in all the cards right away is because I don't want this to set there forever while it's trying to figure out six cards. So I wanted to let Windows figure itself out. It's going to be doing it with one video card. We already have drivers loaded on here. I'll tell you the drivers that are loaded, but a fresh build of Windows with this driver is essentially, uh, that's all that's on this. And it's the latest version of Windows. So what I mean by that is you got to let it do its updates. You got to get it over to at least this date and age right now where we're at. Uh, June 14th of 17 is version 1703 plus or, or plus higher hi, that or higher because if tonight they put out a new version in 1704 you're not confused so anything higher than 1703
if you're ha if you're one of the users that are having a problem where your 1070 or 1060 GTX is only getting two and a half mega hash, you absolutely have to make sure that your Windows is running at the highest version. We did find that that is a huge uh, issue with, uh, if you're running at 1533, which is like a fresh build of Windows, um, it doesn't work. You're only gonna get two and a half mega hash on your card. So update your Windows and you should be good to go. And have some updated drivers. All right, so what's up? All right, so now we're up. It's seen the card just out of the gate. Uh, I would click on the Explorer window down there next to the E. Um, down the, yep, uh, no, that. Right click on this PC. And go to manage. Up, oh, right below flaps. There you go. And go to device manager. The first thing I want to see is did it see the device manager on the left here, down the bottom, up, up, up there and expand uh display adapters because that's all i care about i do not care about the exclamation point under pci convert it sees the 1060 it already had the driver loaded on there the drivers that we have loaded on this build of windows if you go ahead and just hit c local c down there in the, the second window down here you can close all that out that window there hit local c hit nvidia display driver the display drivers that we're using you go back a little there couple folders. I'll make sure that they see the display driver that we're using. It's right there. 282.33 using the latest version of Windows. Windows 10. And it sees the first card. So the very first thing I do is make sure that it mines. I make sure the first card mines, that everything's good, and then I'm gonna plug in the other card. So we're gonna close this out real quick, close the upper X here. Again, this was a fresh build of Windows. I copy a, a, a desktop that I use common, which has all the mining software on it, but we'll go ahead and go through making sure you guys see the latest mining software, and we'll, we'll do some other stuff to make sure that you understand what's on this uh, from a tool standpoint. But um, go ahead in the, the Claymore folder right, the, right above your mouse right now. Double click that, go in there, go inside that folder, scroll down, and we're going to hit the start.bat. Now this is already set up with our wallet address. We're just going to see out of the box what does one of these 1060s do. I'm going to zoom in, make sure you guys can see the performance of this card out of, out of the box, just one, and then I'm going to, we're going to power this down. We're not even going to go through and play with the config. And this is actually dual mining, I believe. Right now, I had this set to dual mine. So out of the box, these are doing 18.4 and 104 on the cred. So out of the box, just one of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let shut this part down. We're going to hit close on this, or you know, just hit the axe up here. Yeah, you can power that, and then just shut the machine down. Just start, shut down. You go down that way. You have to tell people if you were using a command key because they're like, why did that screen come up? Yeah, Control S. Or all S. Huh? 1060s, two different brands. One MSI, one ABGA, and one maybe 3 gig, one 6 gig. Absolutely. You can totally mix all these cards. The only difference is, is that if you're going to be mixing cards, you're going to have to know that you're if you're using MSI Afterburner and you're going to push the same settings that you may get different results because those cards are going to have different things. So if you're going to the upper echelon, Oh, sorry. If you're, uh, all right, let's go ahead and let's plug let's these up. Yeah, let's go ahead and hook these up. Here, let me uh, move down here. You can you can do that. You're just going to have to micromanage your uh, your power. Start conservative on your overclocks and just do like 125 on the core and do like. Uh, you know, maybe 550 on the memory and just stair step it to see what they're what they're good with. And I'll show you here. We're going to see that here. These are all the same card, but we're going to be able to see, you know, if one of the cards are acting up and we start losing the GPU at a higher overclock. Uh, let's try to make these sequential, right? So I try to also, just for reasons, so this one was the first slot, this one's the second slot, this one should be the third one. Can you mix AMD and NVIDIA? 
You absolutely can mix AMD and NVIDIA. We will be doing a video on that. Um, it's not super complicated. Uh, the Claymore Miner actually works pretty well with it. Uh, but you can have like three 560 or three 570s um, from AMD if you find those, and you can have three 1060s and have both drivers on there and Claymore Mine with both of them. It's pretty interesting. Um, but I want to show you guys that video. Um, it's it's kind of a pain, but I mean, we've done a couple and one worked perfectly fine and one was a nightmare. So maybe we'll do a live build of that and see if it ends up being a nightmare. So right now we're just following, it's right here, get that one there, and then this one. We're just following the cards in order of the slots, that way you kind of know where which one is which. Let's get a video on that. Huh? Why not? This one? Yeah. It won't go too far, but uh, uh, Yeah, I mean, we can, we can slide the rig over, but... You want to turn that on, dude? Make it a little better. Not. Okay, so we were seeing if we had audio going on the other piece there. Sorry for the delay if you did not hear any audio. Um, we're trying to get it fixed kind of live so that way we can uh, have to test it. Yeah, the, I saw a note on there about the cable management. Cable management's last. You make sure everything works. Do not, and I repeat, do not zip tie stuff before you know it works. You will be breaking a lot of zip ties. I guarantee it. All right, let's go ahead and fire this up. We're going to get this. Uh, uh, you want to go full screen on the other one, Jay? Well, right now, are we, we just... This what? is the mini one. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, we're good. We wanna, yeah. We want to be on the screen. You fired up? Yeah. So we are we are now just firing this up. Again, all, the only thing that's changed is we've just plugged in all the cards. All the cards in an order... That place looks scenic. All right. Now, you, here's what I do in here. After you plug in all the cards, you don't do anything. You literally wait for at least two to three minutes on an SSD build to drive. If you have a spindle, go get lunch. Because what's gonna go on is Windows is gonna cycle through right now and create a whole bunch of references, of registry keys, uh, input output addressing you're gonna see it blink like this several times this is the stuff that I'm talking about is that it is doing stuff don't freak out if you think it's freezing up you gotta let it let it do its thing Windows is gonna just gonna roll through it like a script and try to get all these things installed it's gonna put drivers against it it's gonna put everything that it needs to put in there so you gotta let it sit there and do its thing you can go to the Explorer go ahead and just navigate to the Explorer thing like we did before over there by the uh, Windows Explorer, yep, and let's go to uh, right click on the uh, P my, this PC, go to manage, if you can work your way over to the device manager, you can watch it kind of do its work, right now just leave it there, it, just leave it on that screen, so right now what it's doing is it's pulling stuff up from uh, the unknown devices and it's installing this driver, so we see three here right now, we're just going to let it keep going, Simple mining. Yeah. We see three cards so far. Mm 
This process takes, uh, I don't know, five minutes sometimes up to. Like you just gotta let it do its thing. And after, after it stops and it looks like it's good to go, I actually give it a reboot and I let it reboot and I make sure that it's done. Because what happens is, is that's the way that you kinda, cause it doesn't tell you, hey, I'm on, I'm on three of five, I'm on three of six, I'm on whatever. So if you restart it and it was in the middle of something, it'll pick back up. You'll know that it's done something because it'll start blinking on you again. And it's like, oh, it's not done setting up that last adapter. And I don't get too freaked out if I don't see a count of exclamation points on PCI communication controllers. Like right now it shows the three here and it has the one um, video controller that it hasn't done anything with yet. You can you can uh, right click and make sure uh, go just right click on the taskbar. Where uh, on the actual bar here down here, just anywhere on the bar, and then go to uh, task manager and go to uh, performance and go to resource monitor. That down here in the bottom. Why does this UI look? And then uh, on that one, I usually just go and look at, um, you can sort it by uh, by read on the disk. On the disk, it's like, so these things are like Excel. You can sort them like Excel. And I look, okay, so right now the performance monitor is the top thing. That's what it's reading. Um, you can look at total write, look at total write right now. If it's, if it's doing a lot of stuff with the actual uh, bitmap, okay, so let's, it's done doing what it's, so it did not set up all the cards, which is fine. So go ahead and hit the X on that, and let's give it a reboot. Just close all these out. Um, power wise you could um, on rails you can't uh, well technically these rails you could yeah technically you could get eight eight on this and we'll sew the power power requirement here but you're gonna be really close to like 900 watts um, if you're really overclocking them otherwise you'll be at 800 technically you could on this particular one and we're zoomed in so you probably can't tell um, go back to the, the device manager and let's just watch that so as we're looking at device manager coming up and finishing up the setup on those cards, what I'm talking about is this 1000 watt G3 gives us two extra of these six pins. So we're using, we have an extra one here and we have an extra one here. So if you had the cards close enough, you could technically, if you brought those down, instead of having three inch spacing, you go to about an inch and a half spacing. You could technically get eight of these on this single PSU. Now your problem here is, um, is you have one extra strand here, so that's the extra two. So actually you're, you're good. As well, you'll have to use every bit of the actual connectors that come with this power supply. Like everything is plugged into this that came with it. So right here is the extra strand that we have and you have two extras. So you have enough of the thing. So the 1000 watt G3 would do eight, six pins, but you gotta watch the power usage. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we know that this is, uh, it's not blinking anymore. So that other devices, we're gonna force it. Um, go down to pull the, the scroller down, there you go. And then under it says v, uh, video controller there, double click that, go to driver. Uh, oh, damn it. Zoomed in. Center. I'm, I'm right into troubleshooting mode, guys. Let me get zoomed in here. So what we're doing is we see this. Update driver. Yep, you want to update driver. You're going to hit browse. Yep, that's the folder. that it, It's pointed to the NVIDIA folder. Just let it, let it search that NVIDIA driver piece there. It's going to automatically pick those up and install it. Now, it looks like we're only going to have four cards so we're gonna test a couple things here and I'm gonna show you the troubleshooting. I am very, very, very glad 
that it's only showing the four cards, even in cryptocurrency mining mode and all this, that we're only seeing four, because this is super typical when you're setting up a rig. And I guarantee if anybody's in this chat right now, they're like, oh my God, this has happened to me. Only three cards or four cards are working, and I don't know what it's doing, and I did everything I thought the board said. This is a good thing. So I'm, we're gonna walk through this, and we're gonna get these other two cards working. I'm glad this is happening. So this is setting up that fourth card right now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the miner, we're gonna get it mining. We're gonna get these cards warm and we're gonna see which ones are down. And we're gonna, we're gonna go through a few steps. We're gonna go back into the motherboard, we're gonna switch it to Gen 2. Versus, because remember, I usually go with Gen 2 on everything. I've seen some stuff on, online with these MSI boards that I have not used, say Gen 1 is where it's at. Um, but that might be also giving us the problem here. So if we we got the four cards, let's go ahead and close it, close all this out. We're gonna we're gonna bring up the let's bring up Playmore. And let's go down to the start and let's let it let's let it run for a second. We're gonna fire this up for a second. I'm gonna have you close this. We're gonna pre pre precision. We're gonna bump everything just a little bit, let it run for a little bit to get them warmer. Now this is set to dual mine too. So actually close this. Close this, I'm gonna turn off the dual mining for you. Uh, right click on start, just right click on it. Um, go to, co uh, co well I'm gonna make a copy of it. Cause we'll go back to dual mining. Just copy it and paste it right here in the same folder to make a copy of it. Control D it. So we just duplicate it under copy, edit it, and then just get rid of everything past the, the X. Yep, past the X, just nuke all that stuff. We're just gonna get rid of that, that dual mine, we're gonna save this, and we're just gonna run Ethereum on this for right now. We'll go to, we'll come back to dual mine. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We'll just let it run. This is vanilla, just Ethereum, no dual mine. The four cards, we're, we're doing this to test which cards are getting warm. We want to see which cards are working. We want to see if this PATA can, or this four pin is uh, two cards in the end or if these are my, my problem child. Yeah, so if they want to mine against my password, they can't. They can throw all their hardware against it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the password's X. <laughs> yes, yeah, if you guys want to copy that, go for it. It's, uh, and, and be sure to point to it and make sure you have the address right. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Free money. Free money. All right, so you can see these are back up to 19 because they're not dual mining. That's out of the box. We're gonna let this run for a few ticks and then I'm gonna, we're gonna just bump them up a little bit um, just to let them heat up a little more. Let's go ahead and just close it. Let's go ahead and heat them up. Good. Yeah, just close this. Uh, hit the X there. Hit precision. EVAGA precision bottom. Yes. Normally I would use afterburner, but uh, actually, yeah. This, when this comes up, hit the X on this. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach them afterburner. Precision. The problem with precision is anything over like four cards. It, it'll give you an error saying uh, too that? many cards. Where's afterburner? It's uh, MSI afterburner. It's up like three from it. Precision is still trying to figure its life out. Okay, so go to uh, core clock and just hit the zero where the zero's at. Just click the zero, it's the third one down over the zero. What are you, what are you saying? Oh, it sorted its life out. Yeah, clo close precision. It took, you know how long precision took to open? Right here, just click this button. All right, click right here. And type in 125. Enter. And then click this, and type in uh, one or uh, six fifty, six five zero. We're going big, and enter. Okay. Uh, we'll leave the power at this right now. We'll play with the power later. Turn the fan speed up. No, it'll, it'll auto. It's fine. Hit hit, hit the checkbox. It sets those in. You can close this, 
and then just fire fire back up the uh, theorem only. And we'll let this run for a second. We're going to see which cards are hot. I just we're, I'm just kind of doing this for some of the folks that probably have to go to bed early to see what kind of what these 1060s could do, um, giving them a courtesy uh, look early look at some overclock on them. Let's see what this guy can do. So right there with that minor overclock, if you wanna, here, you, you just, you got, you're covering up like all their stuff. Right? <laughs> <There>. <laughs> he's trying to get, trying to get he's like, well, this thing's mine and I wanna mine and mine. I wanna mine one. I wanna use this power. Yeah, so right now it's at, it, it's getting about 22.4 with that moderate overclock. And I'm, I'm gonna do a scan real quick to see which ones are getting warm. So this first one's a little warm. This one's getting there. One's this one's cool. cold. This one's cold. This one's warm. This one's warm. Okay. So we got these two centers. Not. Oh. They're not powered. They're not powered. Ah. That would be why. Can't see that. So there you go, guys. Here, bring, bring this down. Bring this down. So we just found out why. And this was a rookie mistake. Perfectly okay that Mike left these two, but right there, mm. there's a reason why it only showed up. We had two of these not powered on. So we're gonna go ahead and close this out. After uh, Mike puts in his wallet address here because he wants to get some of this cheddar. Here, go ahead and zoom back on that. Let him let him see some hashes. And this one. Oh, it is. Dun dun dun! You know, there's a much faster way to do that, but that's okay if you want to try to type it out. I, I, I know. You can copy it. I, 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 send I, got, it to I got that. I can send it to via email. I yeah. Power. <laughs> huh? Power. Power. How much? Oh, how much power is the four? Yeah. Why not? Why we? Why we have time here? It don't matter. If somebody wants to donate to him, they can have his wallet address. Here we go. Can you see that? No. Nope. Well, you're like zoomed super far in right now. There we go. 464. 464 right now with no power power uh, adjustment at all on him. 470. 470 with nothing. nothing. Sorry, your email? We're going to... Uh, do uh, bits be tripping at Gmail. Okay, so let's let's power this down and get these other two plugged in. You can come back to this. Oh, oh, it puked right when we were shutting it down. That's not good. Yeah, that's okay. Shut it down. Right. I mean, we got two cards that are plugged into the PCI Express uh -huh. ports without. It's okay, I'm powering it down. Um, we got them plugged in without even having power, so I mean, who knows what's going on. But we'll, we'll run a different overclock on these. Um, so, we still do have this, we, we had an entire SATA strand using, or being used just for the, the SATA drive, so technically you could have, you still have enough for the two other cards. You could do the two other cards plus your solid state in that scenario, because you know, before I said that we had that extra status strand. Well, that extra status strand is because we didn't have this plugged in. So we're plugging these in right now. And you see, I don't know if you guys can really get the capture of this, but here's the reason why the space that I'm talking about. You see how easy it is to get in there and just adjust these things. And then when we come in to actually do the cable management, it's going to be real easy with this size of case. I know it's a little bigger footprint, but. It really helps you if you're going to be getting in there and having to do some stuff with it. Okay, let's go ahead and power up. Hit the button.
mad and bored. Now, <laughs> he's like, I want this thing mining on mine. He's like, what? Yeah, like uh, Carter's like, yeah, just put it on my hands, bro. We'll get it on you. Just yeah, send it over to me. We'll get, or you can retype it real quick. I'll type it really fast for you. You can mine some on the. If people are gonna yeah. steal a wallet address and mine on it, it's gonna be his. Yeah, yeah. If they're gonna steal my address and mine it. So as uh, we back up on Windows, yeah, it's it's booting up. So now uh, this again, oh, like you can get to get to the control panel here. I'll do it right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's up? <laughs> let's get to the. Uh, <laughs> let's let's get the device manager. Uh, no, it's it's going. Are you talking this fan here? None of none of them are stopping the uh are are over here. No. No, all these fans are good. No, none of these. Uh, so none of these fans are gonna kick on even when the machine is on. And that, we're probably zoomed in so you can't see. Um, none of these fans are going to kick on. Uh, this is that kind of advanced power management that the cards have now, to where they will not spin these fans unless it gets at a certain temperature. So right now, all these temperatures are good. Um, so none of these fans are going to kick on. But the second we get a load on these cards, they're going to start spinning those fans. And nothing's obstructing it right now, and nothing's obstructing this one From down From the here. camera, it looks like this one might be obstructing it. Yeah, no, it's just an optical illusion. It's nowhere near it. Here we can get it back on the other screen. Have you ever gotten a code 43 when installing a new GPU? Uh, yeah, that's usually just because uh, it hasn't set up the driver right or you need to uh, do a pixel patcher if you've done a uh, if you've done a BIOS mod on the AMD cards. Um, it'll it'll stop. It'll do the it'll give you the code 43. Also, if you have the incorrect uh, PCI Express link speed on your motherboard BIOS, it'll also do that. Go ahead and expand the, uh, the, uh, right. How many do we have there? Count them. Five. Oh, it's still doing the, is it still doing one? One, two, three, four, five. Hit, hit the, uh, hit the scan for hardware. Where? Where? Oh, it's still blinking. Yeah, sir. Yeah. It's still fine. You can the. You, yeah. Give it one reboot after this. Go give it one more reboot. So it got, it got five, we're going to restart it just to see if we get the six. We're going to start mining again. Uh, I'm actually hoping that one of these don't work and then we can figure out uh, what that problem is. I'm trying to make sure that this one video has like everything. like Because yeah. it's it's nice to, to go back and say, oh, how do they fix it? I mean, I know you're like, dude, let's get him ready. <laughs> like, it's, it's one time. <laughs> <laughs> Is everything okay on Tinder? What are you talking about? He's, he's, he's checking Grinder out. What? Yeah. Oh, let's start that rumor. <laughs> Alright, All right, go, go to the device manager real quick. Let's check that. Oh, come on. Yeah, we got five. Okay, so let's fire it up. We'll see which one it is, and then we're going to check the riser, we're going to check all the stuff on it. Don't worry, you're not missing too many ashes here. No, no. Right. We'll see which one it is. It's more than likely, I'm seeing if any of these are pushed out. Any other noob? Mistakes. <laughs> you didn't even shake it and you didn't say anything, dude. Hey, you know what? I'm glad I, I should have checked to make red. Uh, temperature cannot reach. Internal driver error occurred. 
Air 15. Yes! Oh, my Blue gosh. Blue screen, bro. It's okay. Well, it still has that probably that major overclock right now, and that yeah. fifth card may not have liked that overclock. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll make sure after this reboot that we take that, that overclock off. So what happened there, guys, more than likely, is that fifth card that just came on did not like that overclock. So we're gonna we're gonna let this thing reboot. Why here? You know what? Why this is? Oh no! We'll, we'll let it come back up. I was gonna say I was gonna read you the check of the risers, but we need to find out exactly which card is having the issue here. I always check my connections for the cables. That's good. That's good. This one's good. This one's good. Oh, already for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I regretted it the second I got the equipment. <laughs> You're like, oh crap. <laughs> uh, uh, person, uh, MSI afterburner. A tennis player. A tennis player. A dude, dude. Come on. <laughs> 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 yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, getting them zoomed in. <laughs> the tennis player. <laughs> All right, let's clock this down. What do you want to do? Just hit reset. Just hit the the back button there. The reset button. <laughs> You're on his face. Where's the reset? Uh, uh this guy right here. Right there's a reset. Uh, I like these questions. These are good. I I take this for granted. I'm I'm I, I value the questions. All right, so that's good. Close it. Let's go ahead and try it again. Let's launch it. Are you? I'm on, I'm on the screen. Okay. <laughs> you see. <laughs> Five. God. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. We got to find out which one it is, and then we're gonna we're gonna walk the issues. I know. I know. This is I, good. I, I, we're we're just uh, dealing with is... database issues all day. <laughs> right, you weren't doing that all day. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> good. Oh, you're running dual. You ran the dual mining one? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. Yeah, you can just close this one and run it. One, one it's problem not your address, bro. One problem at a time. He doesn't put his address in there. Let's just copy out of that one. We'll get to dual mining. After we get this six card done. It's funny. Well, you know, what I was saying is when I when I let, let you plug those into the motherboard, you got to be sure, guys, uh, we don't have an extra riser card, do we? I'm going to show. You do not want to plug those things in backwards. Bad things occur. So when you're plugging into a motherboard, you want to make sure that little lip guy is hanging off on the motherboard. This only goes in one way. If you go this way with it, bad things occur. Including and not limited to smoke and fire. I don't know if they saw that. Hmm? Oh, really? I thought I held it in front of it. Yeah. So, you want to plug it in like, like that into the motherboard, like looking out the back of the motherboard. Not like that. That's bad. This little little piece here should not be going down the PCI. It should be hanging off of it. So you plug it the other way, bad things occur. All right, so it's seen all five base stock clocks again right there at 18, 19. Um, we'll see if they're getting warm. This one's warm, which is good. Second one is now. Looks like four. This one is. This one right here is the one that's not working. Okay, so you can kill it. We know which one it is. It's fourth one over. Let's shut it down. So I think this has something to do with either a, a, either something on the board not setting up for it, or it's the riser, or it's something. Because we're not even getting like an air. Or there's no code 43. There's nothing. It's like, oh. <laughs> oh my God, guys. Hold on, hold on. We got to gotta, gotta show. I'm like, I'm going to move the camera. Like, wait, wait, wait. Make sure it's powered off. Here oh, we go. yeah, it's, it's off. 
Hold on, hold on. Hold on, I'm going night vi I'm not- I'm going night shot on this. Hold on, don't- don't move it. Alright, right there. Wasn't all the way in. Wasn't all the way in. And we did not set this up that way. Like, pull it back off. Make sure. All the way in. Good connection. I, I swear to you guys, we did not set it up like that. They have two simple issues. Fire the tennis player. Fire the tennis player. <laughs> Dude, you're already getting demoted. <laughs> Crikey! <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's fire it up. Let's Spread spin it up. Off. <laughs> that is good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. No, that was the point of this episode. Yeah, exactly. It is, guys, I swear to you, most of the time, it is something that simple. It really is. It's, it's the riser's not all the way in. you got to make sure that they're really secure. Take a light. Look, and if you're working in a dark area, make sure it's all the way in there. Make sure these things in the back are not pushed out on the connectors. Try to go to the four pin Molex if you can on some of these risers directly. That way you know it has a good secure connection. Most of the stuff is like simple stuff. Um, windows and, and the different OS. You feel in the dual? Uh, no, start with, the, start with the regular. Let's make sure. Uh, did we see if all the cards are there? Or is it still no, trying to set I'm, it up? I'm just running. You're just going with it? it? Yeah. <laughs> it's five. So no, close this. Close oh, this. Close this. Because it hasn't even set up the driver probably yet. Go. go. You got you to gotta, you gotta do your baseline. You got to look and see if it's in there. You gotta see if it's trying to set it up. You gotta make sure that that was the problem. It was. Should have been. There it is. Okay, okay. Like double click it real quick. Oh no, it's still it's still setting up. He went straight to the, he went straight to the action there. It's right right to it. <laughs> Skip third base, bro. Just go straight home, right? Click. <laughs> straight home. You gotta let it do its thing. That's what the blink is right here. Unless we just kill the driver because we try to mine with it for a second. There it goes. It's coming back. <laughs> so it's going to blink like a few times here. Shortcuts. The thing, it seems like on the six cards, and I mean, just we got to let it sit here and do it. I don't know if the, I mean, the mining shouldn't have messed it up, but it's, there it is. It's, it looks like it set itself up. There we go. So I, we see all of them. Fire it up. Let's see if we see six. Still see five. Hit close. It wasn't still done dry, setting up. Reboot it after this. Give it a reboot. Give it a reboot. You gotta let it finish all the way setting up. It's it's probably not all the way done. We're gonna give it a reboot. Yes, we've got to disable Windows, uh, it, it, the WAC. We have not done that. Again, this was a fresh build. This is, these are configuration items that you'll do after it. You can do it before. Flag come all the way back up. This reboot should work. Why did it say smack tennis on my head? <laughs> <laughs> let it come up, let it come up, let it come up. Right to it, man. I know those SSDs, man. We didn't put an NVNE drive in here. All right, fine. We, we have to remember to, the next time, the next one on him, I'm going to tell him, okay, here's the one you have to purchase. The 960 Samsung Pro NVNE. I see all six all six it's cards ready. in there. It's Let's ready. do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Yes. Six, six cards. Six cards. All right. God. We'll close that off. Let's crank these guys up. 
Oh, dude, slow down, killer! <laughs> slow down! <What? laughs> it's fine! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. Let's let let's get a few cycles here, so and then we'll light. juice her up. We'll juice her up. Hold on. <laughs> get, always do a few ticks. He's ready right for the beans. Hammer down. <laughs> oh, it's on. Let's Tennis go. player has a date on Tinder. Needs to hurry up. <laughs> Got places to be. All right, so we're getting 19 across the board. That's 115 mega hash. So if you were just buying a six card 1060 rig, let's do a power check. These are baseline things that we got to do. We got to see what are we going to go to achieve. Here it is, right there. Let's make sure we're getting on there. This machine running right now. 618, 624. Is that right? My, there. Yeah. There we go. 616, 618, out of the box, six cards. That's what we're looking at right now. So that's what we're working with now. You can go ahead and close this and let's go ahead and juice it up a bit. So we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna take power limit right here. We're gonna take that to 60. Like six zero, enter. We're gonna drop that quite a bit. We're gonna take the core, let's take it to 100. We're gonna stair step it. It died last time at 125, I'm gonna take it to 100. 110. Okay, let's do 110. <laughs> <laughs> and then memory, you should memory. take this to 80. No, no, you want less power is good. So 60 is fine. If it's stable at 60, and then memory, uh, do 550. And then we'll stair step it up over time. Okay. And then hit, a, hit a check. Yeah, check. I think we yep. can get 575 out of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll stair step it up. Okay, Let's so minimize see. this. I think we can. I think we can. Well, fine. You, you, you're egging him on. <laughs> Jason's egging him on. Where's Kiss? You didn't stand over here for the scene. He's egging him on. <laughs> All right. All right, so we're going to juice this up. So you saw 110, that was 110 GPU. Again, we're using MSI Afterburner to do this. That pushes the settings to all of the cards. Where in uh, EVGA Precision, you got to do and micromanage each one of them. You can also micromanage them in uh, by not having them linked in Afterburner. If you have like a mixed build and you want to be a little more intricate on your overclocks per card. We'll see if this is stable. It should be, it was mining before. Um, I, we could have had just a different issue. I've seen that issue happen if you have things plugged in and they're not powered like those other cards are plugged in without no power. All right, so let's let, let it go a few ticks. Right now we're at 128 mega hash for this rig. Uh, and that power adjustment is huge. Absolutely huge. You're gonna freak out yeah. when you see the power here. Under 500 watts, folks, for 130 mega hash. This is why folks are running to the 1060s you can get over 130 mega hash rig for under 500 watts. So we're going to let this go for a little bit longer. You see it, it popped up to 130. You got to let it go for a few cycles. It settles down, it settles in. Looks like this is topping out. I don't know if we're zoomed in enough to. Yeah, there you are. Good. Um, we're talking 130 mega hash on these six cards using 470 watts. I'll bring this back up as it's kind of settled in, as the fans have spun up. The uh, make sure that's in there. 469. We're still at 469. This is plugged in right to this machine. 130 watts. Again, we'll have these linked on our description, these exact cards. It will take you to Amazon. I believe they were available still on Amazon. So if you guys were, want to do us a solid and click those, you can do that. Um, but it really comes down to if you have local stores, check your local stores, all that kind of stuff. If you guys are looking for these ones, 
if you still haven't got into a rig and you're looking for something that's low power these are good really for folks that have like apartments you know don't have a lot of extra power to throw around 15 amp circuits versus 20 amps this kind of rig could be very well you could put two of these on a single 20 amp rig at these kind of power ratings because you're still underneath you know 1100 watts so you could run two rigs per per 20 amp you could technically do 15 and that's really kind of stretching and i don't like to say two rigs on a 15 but all right so let's go ahead and try to juice it up a little more you want to juice it up a little more yeah let's absolutely. try to see what see if it's stable so kill it yeah go ahead and kill that we're going to bring it back up we're going to juice it up a little more just a little more and then we'll do the dual mine right after that so we're going to go just a hair more let's go to 125 on that your kilowatt meter is the machine only no the 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 kilowatt is just the machine only I don't know if we can hear. Let's just. Yeah. Well, I'm going to show you guys here the actual cable. Oh yeah. well, I'm looking at uh, mics. There we go. Let's see. That'll so you guys can see. There's the crank this up. The thing, and that's plugged directly just into the kilowatt. So it's the only the power supply is plugged in there. So there's your guys' visual confirmation on that. We're going to get you. Look back in over here. Um, horrible at it. Jason's much better at the camera than Carter is. For sure. Carter's horrible at the camera. Alright, here we go. What, what, what'd you do? I didn't even look. What'd you do? 130, 670 on the power. 70? Oh, you don't need more power. Because it died last time at 100. All you're doing is giving more power. You don't need more power for it. I mean, we're gonna juice the power. What I would say is we'll try this. If this works, let's back the power back down to 60. Yeah. 60 is the really power target that you're looking at on these cars. You want to use less power. It's not giving them more power like, give it more power. That's actually a bad thing, yeah, right? right? You only you use power like, uh, that goes against like, his, like an ingredient. Yeah, the, the power is an ingredient. So right there, no, it just died. So it just said, uh, nope, you, not happening. Unbelievable. And, and and it just it, where AMD AMD is a little more forgiving on on when it dies. AMD just goes nah, puked GPU shut off. Nvidia cards and I don't know if this is their driver says you know what I'm locking the driver and you're done and it just blue screens. It does that. It seems to only happen a lot with the Nvidia cards. Um, that's kind of their bane is if you really overclock them. It just seems like the the AMD cars will just freeze up. I mean, maybe the driver will recover. It seems like their driver recovery is a lot better. If an AMD card dies, like it'll uh, what what did we lose? The kilowatt. Well, the light turned it's off. It suicided too. off the table. We lost the light over here. Ah, there we go. The cable was loose. Yeah, the yeah. Oh. I, mean, I think we still have everybody else. We just lost the light for a second. We lost the and the TV. Danger. Danger zone. Okay. Alright, so we're going to take that to 60. Leave that at, uh, do 125. Yeah, do, yeah, leave it at 130. I want to see if that's actually what's killing it. Enter. And then do that uh, yeah. 550 again. It, it, you know what? I'm, I'm betting everything that it's the core clock. Take that back down to 125. And you don't need a lot of as much core. Okay. And keep. Uh, we were at 110 before on that, and we were at 550. Mm -hmm. So take this to six and a quarter. Actually, I think you got more time, more room on the memory. I think the core clock's what's throwing you off. And you brought the power limit down. Power limit's back down to 60. Hit up, at hit, hit. That's oh. at 50. Huh? Power limit's at 50? That's yeah, you want 60. 50. Okay. And then hit the check. Seems about to rip. Yeah. And if this dies, we're going to take the core down to like 120. The core is not as forgiving because that's like on the main processor. And if you juice that up and it just can't handle it, it just blows up. The memory will start having errors. You may get some artifacting. It may freeze up, but it's not going to, it usually doesn't blue screen the machine. It, the, whatever you're working on, it just does memory dump errors. So that might be the big difference on these uh, EVGA, these 
these, I don't want to call them lower cost ones, but the smaller form factors really don't have the headroom on the core. Because some of the 1060s that we use have the actual six pin, or the eight pins versus the six pins, and they just seem to juice up a little better. So let's see what this goes to. We're going to check the power again. It should be really close to what it was before. Get that. I'll let you do that here in a second. Yeah, 450. 127. I think we're going down. We had 110 before, right? 110 in the core. 122. Uh, not like the not and the hardware errors. Um, you can write here. Do leave that running. Leave that running and, uh, and click this one right here. This is the hardware info. Yes. And then run sensors only. This is hardware info 64. We'll put this link on the description. Uh, hit close on that. It needs. We. I'll need to update that, but that's okay. And then scroll down on this and see if we see any hardware errors. All the way down. Just take her all the way down. It's kind of a, a deep sensor check, which parses across all the sensors. We don't see any Windows hardware errors right now. Um, the the Nvidia cards don't produce like the memory error chart like the AMD cards report. But it doesn't look like we're having any real hardware errors. We do, I mean, we've seen a, a peak there of 131, but it still looks super inconsistent at that memory. What I would say is that it's probably having some issues. It just hasn't died yet. Um, just because it's kind of all over the place on the, on the settings. Part of this also, so what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna feed it some more power and we're gonna see if this gets corrected. If you see what I'm talking about when I say gets corrected, is we've had, I call each of these like a tick. Like each tick that's happened. So if it's 122, 121, 122, 128, 131, that's really the target. That should be, that's all the cards performing at that memory speed that we put it at. And then it's back down to 122, 103, and now it's degrading. So what I would say is kill this, let's feed it some more power. Andrew uses these cards and he's showing you this. What's he doing? Andrew's showing you this cards and he's showing you this. So try, we could try what Andrew's talking here uh, and see. Um, what's 150? 154? Woo! We'll see, Andrew. Close this. This screen. It's freezing up. Uh, it died on us. It's freezing up. Yeah. It was, so when it, when it, when we closed it, it died. Yeah, we can do that. If they're, they're probably stepping down because we, because they 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 hit a temp. That's part of the reason. But we'll try his settings. We have a a, a, a user here that user um, that is saying that he has these cards and he gave us some settings. So we'll try them out real quick. What's his hash rate? What's his hash rate? Did he say what his hash rate is with that setting? Again, so this, I mean, for the folks that tuned in for the full build, I mean, we built, did the full build here. We're now we're just doing some configuring. Um, you know, if you guys want to ask some questions why this is coming back up, I can answer some questions. What kind of risers are we using? The risers that we're using are version 6. It's like these ones. This is a version 7. Um, it's just a normal 16 by, or 1 by... 1x by 16x. Um, did not boot. Sorry, it says you can hit 650 on Android. 650 on the core on the memory. But not stable until 630. Oh yeah. So we we'll put them at 630. 
rebooting it, we'll try those settings to 150 core, 70 power, unlink it to make sure that the temp, you can slide the temp over to what's safe, which is no more than like 85 or 90. I wouldn't go any higher than that. Yeah, that, that sounds about right for. So we're gonna show you guys the settings here. We're gonna dual mine here. After, we're gonna get these settings locked in and then we're gonna turn on the dual mine. These, this will be a dual mine setup. We'll, we'll just, tonight we'll just do one dual mine with it with the cred because that's already kind of set up. And then we'll wrap this up. We'll do some questions. Um, an answer and then we'll wrap up the video after we get through uh, a few more here. So probably probably no more than uh, 15, 18 more minutes left on this. If that, uh, we're already at three hours. Yeah. Right, 70 on the power. 70 on the power. Uh, uh, oh, unlink. 70 on the power. Yeah, you, here, hit the... Uh, unlink uh, that. Yeah, unlink that yeah. and then set this to like, uh, like 85. 85. No more than that. Okay. And then that to 150. 150. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thunder. Is that thunder? What about the map? It is thunder. Uh, 630. And then hit apply and see if we blue screen. Sweet. At least took the core. Now let's put a load on it. What do you guys think this thing will push? 135? Let's see what she can do. No red screen, no red screen. Oh, you're moving it. <laughs> you're moving it. How is the overclock the core? I got it. How is the overclock the core help? Uh, it usually doesn't. Only, overclock in the core is usually only good for uh, Zcash. I don't, it doesn't look like this is going to work. Go back to it. Let's look. 85, power limit 70. Take that down to 140. There. Yep, checkbox. Try it again. Close afterburner. I don't like that. I don't. I do not run with afterburner in the background open, just because I don't like it pinging the sensors when it's trying to mine. Oh, you, you you're screwing them up. Dude. <laughs> you keep moving it. <laughs> you are worse than Mike. That's <laughs> uh, not looking too good. The cameraman, watch this. Yeah, yeah. Follow this. Yeah, this isn't looking too good. You can kill it. Yeah, you can kill it. I mean, it's uh, what? Reboot it. Reboot it. Leave these settings. Did you guys find the link to simple mining for a video? Yeah, it's it's hot. Uh, did we get the machine, or did we get the I, the image is burned? I can post the link. Did, for did it. you did you set the image to an uh, address though, like a UBT uh, Rick type? Oh, you got a BBT request, so you got it hooked to that? Okay. Yeah, we could try that too after this one. Real quick. I, I want to I wanna get this showing a dual mine and just to see what it can do. So hopefully we can lock in this test and then we'll we'll, we'll do that test for the folks that want what to stay is, on. What does dual mine do? Uh, it's just mining two coins, same time. Okay. Essentially, they've, they've got it to where certain parts of the card, they can 
use every other clock cycle or they can leverage another part of the graphics card where one is a very heavy memory map so it's essentially that they'll spread it uh, with the processor catching on each other clock cycle and they can do it um, at the same time and not have too much impact on each other bundle it in the same uh, five shit also card what's the name of the 13 GPU motherboard API file, I'm going to Get some, uh, failed to get device handle five. Close this. So it looked like one of the cards, what was it? What was the question? Look at your device the manager. The 13 GPU motherboard that's supposed to be coming out. What's it called It's the ASRock uh, B Pro BTC, uh, was it like 100 plus or something like that? Have they shown any new tests that don't set it on fire? No, I have not seen any other tests since then. They're, They're all there. It's just it, it doesn't. It's the setting. It just it just didn't even activate it. Uh, change that. That's why I wanted to check and see. Yeah. So the guy that has these or says he has them just has some good uh, some good ASIC quality. Go to one ten there. Take that down to the five. Let's do five uh, eighty. It's auto. It's auto. Fine. And then close that. I mean, you can set them, but we'll have a. You're probably gonna have to restart this, but go ahead and try it. Yeah. It's just it blew the driver. We're giving it one more reboot. Lesser settings. And then uh, we'll try dual mining. What point is this with dual mining on an NVIDIA card? What? Uh, on NVIDIA for dual mining? Yes. That's a good question. Um, we'll have to do some testing on it. Because NVIDIA right now for like the cred sucks. Like compared to like. Um, AMD cards, and I haven't tested it with library coin yet, and Psi coin. But right now, just bottom line, just using, you'll see the power difference. It's not that much, and it's just worth doing. They're saying since you're closing afterburner in the middle of starting play more, it's gonna crash every time. Well, yeah, and usually I I make my setting changes in afterburner and I close it, and then I launch play more. It creates a hook into the sensors in the graphics card. So if you start messing with that when it's trying to launch the miner, it's going to crash it. So that's a good point. Good for bringing that up, guys, in the chat. You're absolutely correct. When you're sitting there doing active sensor monitoring using something like, like Afterburner, and if you like close it or you do anything as you're starting the miner, it's going to create some weird stuff, such as what we've been seeing. I don't like having it running like when the mining's running, and I don't like messing with it like what, what you're doing. <laughs> you're learning a lot of stuff not to do, like that kind of stuff. Just let it do its stuff. Uh, it it's probably doesn't like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> let it do its thing. Stop messing with it. Okay. I had a point in the description. Oh, you got the uh, link in the description, good pretty good so we'll let that run for a second let's make sure it holds in for anybody that's interested the nvidia build the beta nvidia build for simple mining is linked in the uh the description there's also a warning overclock does not work for this build please use at your own risk yes so simple mining that link to simple mining's nvidia build right now is out there in our description so it looks like this this clock is holding right now. We'll see if it holds for a little bit. That's 132 mega hash. We're gonna check the power. We did bump up a little bit on the power. Again, we're at 70% versus 60. Looks like we're at about 100 mega hash more. All right, 100, 100 watts more. We're at 133 now. 
I would say at 60 and a little less of a clock is much more efficient. 129. That looks like the sweet spot. 110 and 550 on these cards at 60 looks stable, looked at 30 mega hash, and was at 460, 470 watts of power. That is the sweet spot. We'll update the we'll update the description with that. Um, <laughs> somebody was kicking him out of the chair. Uh, so let's go ahead and close this. Let's go ahead and do some dual mining right now, real quick. And then we'll try the uh, we'll try the simple mining uh, beta build real quick before we close out the chat. Um, we'll just launch it. We'll try to configure it real quick. We have the screen for simple mining on the other on the actual render machine, so you guys will be able to see the configuration as we do it. Again, I know this has been a long stream, and I, I thank you guys for bearing with us. I wanted a one-stop shop, full build, cradle to grave configuration, troubleshooting problems getting it to work, customizing it, making it go fast, and then showing you power changes and showing you dual mining. All in one video, we'll get uh, simple mining there and then I think that'll close it out. What was the power limit? Power limit was 60. We're making sure that our description is getting updated right now with this model number and cards of what worked for us in this video. Right there, it looks like 126 and 1200 decred, which is not that fast on decred, um, but it's showing you uh, dual mining and here's the power usage and what we're going to do is we're going to close this out in a second here and I'm going to drop that power usage back to 6 uh, to 60 percent we're going to slow it down just a little bit so hardly Forward. any power movement back there you go so 560 and that's with the 70 percent power limit so let's go ahead and close this. Let's put the power limit back to 60. Let's slow it down a little bit. The uh, MEM was at 550. MEM was at 550 and 110. Apply, close, launch it. I do have a Litecoin address. I will get those added on there. I have like I'm gonna put Litecoin, um, Saya. I'll, I'll put like eight other addresses on there, guys. If you guys want to awesome and want to donate to the channel, uh, we'll get some more content on there for you guys. It was 569 for the previous one. 570. And we now are and this is this is regular, right? Not dual mine, right? We're gonna do that test first. Let's see what it comes in at. We'll do a recheck of the 60% or the 60 percent power limit with 110 and 550. And then we're gonna do it a dual mining, and then we're gonna do simple mining and close the video out. Mark Morris, thanks for the the five dollar donation, brother. Yeah, yeah, it was the Dorad credible. So it looks like thirty mega hash right there. Thir a little, a little drop down twenty six. We'll see if I can get some power. Here I can. Uh, I got it. I got it. We're good. So we're at 488. So still under 500 watts. That 60 is where it's at. Still at 30 mega hash, 25. It's still a little flaky, um, but it look, by and large, you're at 25 to 30 mega hash. It's under 500 watts. Six cards. It's running right in the the power efficiency band for the power supply. Not overstressing it. Power supply is not working any that hard. You need that big of a power supply again. Remember, it's not predicated on the power usage. You need to have enough six pins. You could get by with an 850 on this build. You just gotta make sure the 850 has enough six pins to cover six cards. Jack Evans, you're a boss. 
yeah, we'll, we'll get these settings posted for folks too. All right, let's go ahead and do the dual mining real quick and then let's do the simple mining and we can wrap it up. Rain super chats. Is that is that the right time? No, no, no. 11:42. Yeah. All right. Dual, dual mine, dual mine, real quick. We'll check the power with the 60 and see if it takes it up over 500. So we're doing the dual mining now. This is Decred and Ethereum. We're leaving the 60% power, the 110 core, and the 550 memory on these. GTX 1066 gigs. We'll let it get hashed and then we'll check the power on it. Oh, is there no changes to the other one? To which one? To the overclock. No, we left it the overclock. We're just not doing dual mining right now. Between the two of the when the power went down, we changed the power from 70 to 60. Okay. So it looks like 122, 123, the credit's at 1200 like it was before. And look at that, folks. So far, still hold, we're dual mining. We're dual mining. I'm getting closer here. I don't think you can get any closer without. Oh, just, uh, zoom in on the uh, oh. on the actual thing. They saw that. They saw this, which was still under 500 watts. Still under 500 watts, and we're dual mining. And it's still 120 mega hash rig at 500 watts. AMD architecture is going to get you more hashes right now on the, at, per class. So this is like in the, ten, the 570 class of card on the AMD side. AMD side with a BIOS and undervolted will get you, this, this same six card rig will be about 165 hash, about 40 mega hash more on six cards on AMD on the same class of card, four gigs, four gig card versus the six gig. Um, but you'll be at about 770 watts of power. So you're about 200 more, 200 more watts of power for 40 more mega hash, which is actually pretty good. I mean, uh, 1080 Ti gets you about 37 mega hash, and you're going to be spending a little more, about that, a little over that much power. So um, it really comes down to at this point, guys. It's, it's unfortunately not a choice. I mean, you can't find 570s right now. You can barely find 470s. Which are really in this, this class of this class of card. So this is a, a solid, you know, just over twenty mega hash card, dual mining. It is absolutely over twenty, you know. And this is kind of now this isn't the highest in uh, ten sixty either. This is kind of the mid mid grade ten sixty six gig card, and and it's still popping in that with the dual. So let's go ahead and shut this down. We've we've we beat Windows to death. Let's try one quick uh, simple mining boot and see if we can get it configured, show folks on that. Again, we now, the simple mining is gonna be kind of a vanilla that we cannot overclock right now um, with the simple mining in NVIDIA. So we're gonna get about 19 mega hash on it. We're really just gonna see if, if this actually works. I have not tried this yet. You guys get to see uh, with us. We're just going to plug that USB in and one of the USB 3.0 blue spots. And I have it set to Claymore 9.5. You got to set the nine, Claymore 9.5. All right. If it's off, I'm going to unplug this. So all we're doing is unplugging the SATA drive. We unplug the SATA. We plugged in the USB with the, the linked OS to Simple Mining's NVIDIA build, the beta build for that. We linked it in our channel. Do you have a pool that you want me to Oh, I'll just mine it to them. Okay. Give it to him. What's the button for boot device to uh, hold delete or F8? Is it uh, it's gonna boot. It's gonna. Boot it's gonna automatically boot on that when it fires up. Like it's not on yet. Huh? You wanna click it. They want. They want to see the rig. Yeah. They want to see the rig again. 
we'll uh Don't mind the cable management, that comes after the build is good. Alright, we got you guys in the Look at that, okay, came into the BIOS, go into uh, USB, which one did you plug it in? The blue one? Top blue one. Top blue one. Um, so, it should be this one that's lit up. Click that. Or is it, oh, you had it lit up because you were on top of it. Um, it would be, which one's it, which uh, one are 3.0s? Try the USB, that one. Uh, do the uh, oh, they want to see the actual EGA box. Oh, okay, of the card. Hit, hit the uh, pull the USB over, just all of them, doesn't matter. These that way, the USBs are booting before. I don't care which one it is first, and then just hit this X. Yes. Yes. Please update. Yes. Yes. The tabled list to the GTX list. I will update tonight. It's. I already have the list. It's. I have it all in Excel already. I just haven't updated the the code for it yet. Did it come? Did it not boot off this? Is this drive good? I thought it said that it stopped writing. It didn't hit a hundred percent, but it said it was it hit the end of the file. Uh, this might not be good tonight. Then let's let's check and look at it. Yeah, plug it in real quick. I mean, you are you were you were able to edit a file. Yeah, right? I edited the config file. I think that's one of the first things that writes. Yeah, if it didn't hit a hundred percent, it probably didn't go. Yeah, it's not. You can check the device manager. That the that might be a bust. Might have had a bad ride on the thing, and that takes a cool minute. So, uh, I'll we can plug this back in. What we can do uh, is answer some questions, and then probably call it a night. We'll have a separate video. I'll have another live stream in the next few days um, where we're going to cover the Nvidia Showdown, where I'm going to take you through the entire platform. 1060 or the 1050 Ti again. 10 1060, three gig, six gig. 1070, 1080, 1080 Ti, all of them. And then we'll do maybe in that build, uh, we'll do the NVIDIA and the AMD uh, dual cards uh, on the single board for you guys. We also like your suggestions. You guys can always comment on stuff that you want to see. We think for the super chat folks, we we value that. Thanks for uh, dropping some stuff in there. We'll make sure our other our other. Uh, if you guys found this informative, it helps you start building your mining farm. If you guys were uh, cool and dropping some. Uh, if you can, af you know, afford to drop a little, we, you know, we take that. We'll extend that over to you know folks helping out, Jason, the guys, making sure we can get that website completed and done. Why I do this for the fun and love of it and, and try to get out content to you guys all the other time, I do have to take care of some of these guys helping out. So I take that and make sure that that's done. What are the downfalls of setting the GPU's temperature bar too low? Will it crash? Uh, the power temperature is not necessarily, I mean, you could take, we could take it all the way down to 50. It's just what it's going to do is it's going to starve it some and it's going to make it go a little slower. But yeah, if you're really looking for the optimization on the power, um, with the NVIDIA cards, it seems to not bug them as much. Uh, the, the AMD cards, you drop that power level too much, and if you're not dropping the GPU with it power um, or speed, then it, it's going to act a little flaky. 
I'll answer a few more questions and then we'll wrap this up, guys. We're a little over three hours on this. Uh, did we just try Zcash? We didn't launch Zcash. Let's launch, launch Zcash real quick. Let's close this out. Let's close this out. We got a Zcash miner on here. Um, what is that? ZEC miner. Good call. Keep them coming, guys. We'll go for about five more minutes. Hit a uh, hit, uh, mining pool hub. I think I got that configured. See it? Mining pool hub right here. Don't click. This is an older version, I don't know if it's all. It starts with the C, they were talking about it. I should have fired up by now. ASICs? No, it wasn't ASICs, it started with the C. Something was coming out. Uh, that would not work? Alright, close that. So open up, uh, here, close that one. Going to uh, nice hash. Scroll down. Go click the nice, nice at the smiley face. We have a pretty good showing tonight, guys. I, I think we got I think we got some of the Barney Police folks over. Hopefully, we did. Uh, we talked to him uh, today in his chat and his live stream. Trying to help him get into a G, uh, his own mining rig. Hit yes on that. And then uh, hit uh, settings. And then go into devices. And under each one of these, so the first one, yeah. uncheck all besides equal hash on each card. That one, GP2. Go through all of them, uncheck that, and then we'll hit. Then you'll hit uh, save and close. I know we got some other questions. We're down to 288. And what was our peak tonight? Like three, four, four hundred. We had four hundred live people. Man, that's amazing. A lot of folks getting into this. We're going to try to get a lot of questions answered. If we, if you guys have sent us an email, we've tried to get through some. I think some of you guys, if you guys are in the channel, if I've gotten back to your email, you can drop a hint to everybody else to say, yes, I do get back to you, folks. Oh, yeah, I'm getting close to this. All right, start it. Yeah, hit save and close. Yeah. And then hit start. And then hit the checkbox where it says start mining after benchmark. Now it's going to do a quick benchmark on all four, six cards real quick. That takes uh, a couple minutes, a minute, something like that. And then it'll start doing Zcash. We'll do a quick Zcash look at this. That way they at least have a benchmark on that and then we'll kind of wrap it up uh, for the end. So you guys got probably a couple more minutes. We'll answer some questions. How did you secure the GPUs to the rig so securely? Um, so the GPUs and the rigs, for the folks that haven't seen it, I'll come back into that. There's nothing you're missing there. Yeah, this is fine. So they got a they got a screw right here, which actually goes into and you'll you'll see later uh, if, when you rewatch this video in the beginning, you'll see how we built this case because we actually did this for the folks that did not see us build this case. We built it in this video. That was the first couple of hours. So we got a screw here, and then they rest up against that board. So it's it's like a tension where it kind of it lays up against that and holds it. So as this thing's trying to push down because of gravity, it's running right into that that block of wood, and then this screw piece here just holds the card in. So this it's very very uh, solid. It's not going anywhere. You can pick this up, turn it upside down. All that kind of stuff, and it it were it'll, it'll hold up fine. 
Man, that lighting is just you know, setting that up. Auto lighting here. Down as, as Digital Gold would say, we're down in the mine. It's the basement area. They coined that. I did not. I give that to them. I think they're on to something. I think if you have an area in your house or an area in your air, you know, in uh, your dorm or wherever you're at, and that's where all your rigs are at, that is called the mine. You guys can start spreading that. Thank Digital Gold for that word, but you're down in your mine. You're mining the coins. It's a little tacky, but I like it. The motherboard is screwed down uh, uh, in the wood. We're screwed down into the spacers. You need some room underneath the motherboard to breathe, and you need some space where the where the clock is at. So it's here. I'll uh, bring up nice ash, the little the icon, the little face icon. No, it's not here in the task. Okay, just click it. So it looks like we're at this rig here, guys. Is fifteen hundred souls. It's doing a little over 1,500 souls, which is equivalent to, you can think, Zcash is price, watch out, he's, he's, he's zooming in on it. What are you mining right now? This is Zcash. We're using NiceHash 17512. These cards, 1,500 souls, is earning $19.38 a day. 1938. 1932, somewhere around that. Almost $20 a day, and, and and this is getting converted over to Bitcoin. This will pay out in Bitcoin. Right now, because it's configured to, you can get it, you can mine just for Zcash and get Zcash, but this is the equivalent uh, in uh, USD that this particular machine would mine, and this particular day. So if you watch this video a year from now, it's gonna be different. But right now, to give you a benchmark of what this machine would do and as an, a direct output on today's prices. Oh, look at that nice benchmark. So that that was a blue screen. It's probably because of the, the settings that we had that are why they're compatible with the, the 110 core, the 550 uh, memory are not with Zcash. Zcash is hitting it a little differently. We'd probably have to back it down some um, or give it a little more power than the 60. You'd have to play with it. Again, this is common stuff. You gotta watch your rig, you find out what it does. What I say is you don't have a rig solid until you got at least 24 hours with it being without any restarts or anything. You get through that 24 hour mark, then it's just a matter of watching it each day, once or twice a day to see if it's up and staying good. Um, but you're gonna have to try some different settings. That's part of it. It's just not plug and play, you gotta play with it. If you just took them out of the box and plugged them in, you're probably going to have a stable rig. But you're not going to have necessarily an efficient rig because you haven't dropped the power and you're not getting everything you can out of your cards. So you got to play with it. You got It's a lot of trial and error to find it. So we're going to re this reboot it. It did not like that reboot. That's what that little icon in the middle of the screen is. Um, but this rig would probably be real stable with the ZK, or with the Ethereum Decred mine that we had going. It didn't reboot after 10 minutes of running and fine. We'll let it, we'll let it run and see how it does. Um, but any more questions? We're gonna wrap it up. Yes, please. Surge protectors. Uh, I mean, I usually look for at least 4,000 joule, 3,600 joule on one machine. got two more minutes guys I'm gonna end this at 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 330 we're at uh, we're at 328 we'll get those other addresses added for the uh, for the folks asking if we if they had a donation for Litecoin um, and we're also going to look into twitch I'm going to talk to Barnacles and see what, about getting that set up uh, and maybe we'll start simulcasting on twitch I know from a uh, a lot of folks that came over from his stuff, you guys are actually going on Twitch and seeing uh, seeing some good success over there too. So 
We'll try to get over to Twitch too to simulcast. Any more big questions? Any more super chat, closing super chat questions before I uh, call it? I think I, I think I put him to sleep. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Thanks again for watching. Um, thanks again for the questions. I, I think everybody here that was here tonight helping. Um, Jonathan is asking how the GPUs are secured to the frame. Oh, I already talked about oh, okay. it. Jason, you want to say hey to everybody? <laughs> hey, everybody. Man behind the screen. There he is. And I, I, I think they deemed you the tennis star. The tennis, the tennis, tennis guy. star. The tennis guy. There's Mike. That's Not his rig. <laughs> That's his rig. Um, and we'll uh, we'll wrap it up, guys. Thanks for uh, tuning in. I'll try to get another video out in the next day or so, and or a live stream. So uh, thanks again, guys, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.